We go. We're good. Mm. We got a countdown coming. Do we count with it? We could do robot voice countdown. Do it. Let's go robot voice countdown. All on. the way from 29? Yeah. That's a, that's a big let's, count. Let's do it. Here we go. That's going to get real old. 20, 19, 18, 18 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, by talking about powder panic, maybe Seth, you could walk us through what powder panic is for those who don't know. Wow, powder panic. Yeah. Well, kind of where we're where we're currently at in the world geographically, Brighton, Utah. Uh, powder panic, or I guess any you know resort here in Salt Lake, it's pretty much just all out assault on the canyons when it snows. To get up there, to get in line, and to go ride for the day. And pretty much everyone is just going for it at all costs. I love it. Well, we should basically get into the fact that lift lines are a gigantic issue right now. We got some photos and videos we can throw on the screen. And, you know, here, here we have a video. I think this is from Vail, maybe. But look at this lift line. Yeah, powder panic's not just around here. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. So... You know, Brian and I were talking Ooh, that's Vail. <laughs> earlier today with these lift lines. Uh, what is the future of chairless snowboarding, Brian? What do we got to do here to avoid these gigantic lines? What's the issue? Well, I don't know. Some part of it, I mean, going back to powder panic a little bit, you're like, you want to celebrate it because other people care about snowboarding. So it's nice that like now we are having to race people because that means that in some ways, we've done our job well enough that we've hit, like, max capacity everywhere. Uh, but I don't really know what the what the option is to solve that. I mean, I think you and I talked about it maybe off air of just uh, there's a limited amount of ski resorts. And there's, like, no real competition happening anymore. It's not like, oh shit, there's there's a couple new ski resorts popping up in the like greater Salt Lake area so that that's going to disperse more users. It's just kind of like, okay, well, we have these like five resorts that the government has given land leases to, these big corporations bought them, and then uh, those corporations now basically own our ability to use lifts in the mountains. Because no one can be like, it's not like we could be like, hey, guys, let's get together and build something across the street from Brighton that maybe services our demographic better. Or like any other business, not any other, but most businesses, you're like, oh, shit, it, this restaurant's too busy. We should open one across the street. And now, you know, we just don't really have that option. So it's a strange, like, you know, you're kind of involving the government at like a capitalist level, but. The, you know, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a really tricky one. You could go down a wormhole of, like, what certain types of people would say is the answer. Um, yeah, because you don't want to raise lift ticket prices. 
at all. You want to bring those down. Right, yeah. They're building new indoor spots. Dubai has got one under works. Mm. There's another one, I think, coming up in the UK. Well, there's not really a powder panic Those aren't in a powder indoor. panic situation, but at least but it could spread. Mm. Could tourists, be in the future. Tourists could go to these indoor spots. and Tour gear. Do you guys got powder panic in Norway? Is that a thing? Uh, there's not that much powder in Norway to panic. <laughs> about, to be honest with you. Dude, I remember in the East, though, it'd get like a couple inches and it's on, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's right now it kind of is. It's Hemsedal had a snow record. Are the lift started. lines crazy over there, too? Not too bad. Okay. I mean, we, just, we only have five million people in yeah. the country. It's What's not, the like, snow record? It's, it's, it's what like, was the snow record they hit? I don't know. It's probably... Uh, I go it's meters. It's probably CM, huh? Yeah. Oh, meters. What the CM's hell's a meters. CM? Nobody knows. Yeah. It's in the ether. I don't know. <laughs> Let's build it's more lifts. Snow, Let's Nobody just build knows. more lifts. Open it up. Is that what it is? More yes. lifts? Yeah. They got those six packs and then the eight packs. and The six packs of cores. Yeah, the, the lifts, you know, they're getting wider. Maybe they're going to build like a 12 pack. Yeah, I mean, they, open up more terrain too. Yeah, let's, you need competition. Get it there's, out there. If there's if if competition doesn't happen, then it will turn into like five hundred dollars a day, six hundred dollar a day lift tickets. They'll most likely get rid of like uh, you know a season pass because it doesn't compete with the daily mm-hmm. lift ticket if it's sold out. Like that is the only way that economics solves this problem of the canyons is just like make it more expensive. The big problem at Brighton is the parking lot though, right? Good point. But for the well, uh, it's epic epic pass or uh, You don't think Vail it's the parking resort, lot? They tried to they like they pay they you have to pay $250 now for a day pass at Park City and it's still fucking packed. 250. Yeah. Um, so I was told that the parking so the lot price thing tells didn't you really work. The parking lot tells you how many people should be at the mountain, and when it's full, that's the right amount. Yeah, and that's why they don't go up or something. Maybe do what Powder yeah. Mountain does. Just limit cap, the cap sales. Yeah. But the reason why mm. they do that is because the road is so steep that they're only like legally allowed to sell a certain amount of tickets because the road is like dangerous, dangerous because of the grade. Make roads more dangerous. <laughs> Make roads more dangerous. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Oh, Make roads shit. more dangerous. All right, we're going to get into a guest question, a voicemail, if you will. Uh, let's start this one off with, uh, I like this question. Here we go. Hey, this is Miles from Rado, and I got a question for Chris, <laughs> Seth, Brian, and Torgier. And it's, why is Bud the coolest person you know? All different answers. Cheers, guys. I was wondering why I was getting left out. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz, do you want to take this one or no? Do I, should I take yeah. this one? <laughs> It's uh, it's all smoke and mirrors. You know what I mean? Smoking in the mirrors. Yeah, smoking in the, smoking mirrors, in yeah. the mirrors. Well, I'll t- I can I can take it. Uh, I mean, banter, like a black belt and banter. You know, just the guy makes me laugh. Pretty simple, simple as that. Also, good energy. Good energy. Yeah. That's what we're all searching for. I would have to say that too. I mean, he's always got a smile on his face. He's always cracking jokes. And what you know, we've uh, we've we've said this before. He's always selling. You know, he's always selling you on something. Mm -hmm. You go go on a trip with him, he's always selling something, whether it's like a song or a spot. (laughs) Oh, he's got a pitch. Or somewhere to eat. He's always selling. That's true. I love it. That's true. Also, that lens, dude, you know, the lensmanship. He's good with the camera, but when you look at the lens, just the the cauldron of... of Yeah, I got a new wide angle in the mail. Brand new? I I had to dirty that thing up. (laughs) (laughs) When's the last time you wore gloves? Uh, tsh, no, who needs gloves, man? That's what I'm My hands are just numb <laughs> <laughs> permanently. Tell you something, he does great in the cold. He doesn't do great with the, the heat. No, the heat. The heat I'm not, is the issue. Not meant for the heat. He's not meant for the heat. Get me far from the equator as possible. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, I think we got some cool stuff to talk about here uh, in regards to Brighton. You know, we get, we've, we've been seeing a beat down. Well, actually, you know what? Brighton's been having a pretty good lift line. And there's a question is, do you... What's the consensus on dropping your board in the lift line, <laughs> leaving it there, and, you know, you get there at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., you put your board first in line, you leave it there, is your spot reserved? What's the take on that? Yes. Absolutely. I'm all about it. I'm with the general, so I'm going to say yes because I do that with him, and I follow his lead. I think that's the best answer is if you are confident enough to walk back up there like in an hour and a half from your warm car. <laughs> 100%. And socially like endure that awkwardness of just like, 
What's up, boys? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I know you saw my board excuse, there. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Has Come anyone? On, I got us a spot. Has <laughs> anyone <laughs> given you guys a hard time on that? Uh, you get so many death stares. When Who's I gonna fuck with no Seth? No one's the general. No, but I'm saying like there hasn't been like some old. Crusty skier. Hey, you know, we do have a video of Griffin Siebert. He did not leave his board in the line. And we're here at Brighton. This is filmed by Germ. This is him <laughs> sneaking through. This is a mile long lift line, just kind of walking his way right up to the front because, you know, he knows us. Oh so casual. God. Just board in hand. There's no line for I the think I was calling match. him over. Hey, come on. Fully <laughs> caught. Griff, Griff, Griff. We got a spot. We got a spot. It's Griff's birthday today, right? Yeah. yeah. Happy, happy birthday, birthday. Happy Griff. Birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> No, I mean, like, if you get up there and, like, you make the effort and you're in there and chuck your board down, dude. Right? It's a game of confidence. I heard that you get beat up for that at Baker, though. Yeah, I'd like to see someone try that, like, Snowbird or something with the old, old looks and see how it goes. Yeah, I just don't think it goes. I don't think it goes. It down. wouldn't go the same way, yeah. right? No. I mean, because you also, you're you're playing this game, which is weird because you're asking this question to Seth and probably uh, like minions of his or other pros, which probably those people in line around him know who he is and know who the kids are and shit. So then you also got to be like kind of a bad boy to be like, excuse me, Seth Hewitt. Like, <laughs> could you pick your board up and get out of line? <laughs> like I moved here from Ohio because of your part in 2002, <laughs> but... I don't appreciate you fucking dropping your board here and then coming back two hours later after eating some pancakes. And props to the lifty that calls you out one day. Hey, you know what? <laughs> if says, if hey, someone was freaking out in the back, in back, I'd just be like, yo. Come on up. Come on up. But get, you in front of me. get in front of me. I don't care. Like, I just want to get on the lift. You know yeah. what I mean? I will say that Vulcan rig, first rig in the lot every day. Always, yeah. Always. And it's like you what? were there. Why, why can't you just leave your board? Yeah. What time you get up to get up there? Uh... What I get up at five if I'm like okay I gotta like because I gotta you know make the coffee get a little bit of the breakfast make the jelly sandwich get up at five drive I'm twenty minutes thirty minutes for the chair lift open at nine a.m. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm That's in it. the I'm in the canyon like like we're talking powder panic I'm in the canyon at six and it's not because I'm like trying to panic I guess like I'm trying to panic or not panic in Eat the, line. the panic yeah I'm just. Just want to get up there, and then the tent came out, the fire pit came out, the chairs came out. Mm. Harry's bringing up the wheels of steel, making the pancakes and the eggs and the bacon. I mean, dude, we're there. So. The wheels of steel are the cooking utensils, oh, yeah. not the music. Yeah, yeah. The, he's not uh, DJing for <laughs> clarity there. I mean, it kind of looks like he's DJing. It's sick. Harry's killing it. And yeah. Boggs, like that's pretty sick. Yeah. Well, this is a great one talking about Boggs. Uh, you know, who's currently, there's been a lot of things happening here. Brighton, who, who do you think is king of Brighton? No. You know, we got Blake Paul's obviously putting a beat down, down. BMO is coming in the scene hot. Boggs, you know, you got Mikey LeBlanc, you got the general, you, you know. We got Austin Sweeten in town right now. I mean, who, who's who's taking it right now? I mean, king has to be like one of the old heads. General? Sure. The general? I don't know. The general's probably putting in the most no. time in the office. Like, I don't, is do you think anyone's up there more than you? No. Uh, yeah. I hope. No. No. I hope. Right. No. Like. I hope. No. I mean this 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 has been unprecedented like crazy <clears throat> times, right? Like I see it snowing the way it is, and these storms stacking up, and try to keep me away from that mountain. Like this is what you know. Everyone's always like the old days. The old days were you know it was so sick back then. No, this is happening like if you're not up there experiencing it yeah. you're missing out people are going to be talking about what's going down at brighton for ages yeah. and this like this beats anything that i've ever experienced so i'm like i'm not missing it. it's like that 50 year swell right but if we're talking king or brighton right now like person that just you know is, is on it it's blake He's yeah, killing it. Yeah. yeah. Straight up. But he's a prince. He's not a king. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, he's the forever prince. a prince. Because <laughs> yeah. he's, you know, even he told me he was turning 30 soon. And I was like, Whoa, what? Like, you know, so but he'll old be head. a prince forever. Yeah, that's crazy. And then, and then Boggs is, he's like in the ranks. He's sending, like, yeah. going nuts. Air Bogdale? Maybe the jester. He's entertaining <laughs> everyone, you know? Like, I see BMO out there too. He's killing it. Low key ripper. He's you know, just like we got we got to talk about the Northwest invasion. Who's gone the biggest out there? Do we know? Cannon and Boggs. It's got to be Cannon and Boggs. I'm gonna say Cannon. Cannon we got some like Cannon clips. Tree, tree. Look at this Cannon gap. Thing. 
Yeah, that. I. You know what's funny is we started this dubbing one. that clip this cannons. One. We call it cannons. That one. Yeah. That's diamonds. This but. is this is so flat. This is yeah. there's no downhill. This is not <laughs> a downhill landing. That's this is a, probably thirty wow. feet. Just Spawn to test of Barrett out little in Temple right there. Yeah, <laughs> the he's Spawn. got the genes. <laughs> Those are good genetics. Yeah. yeah. That it, was crazy. It is pretty sick that he's got the two most famous goofy footers, and homie goes regular. Yeah, like, that's a, that's how did move. his parents not just make him goofy? <laughs> they also live at like a left, <clears throat> le- yeah. like wave. You're like, why didn't you just make him go goofy? No one's really goofy or regular. Is anyone really goofy or regular? You just pick, right? No, they push you. you get or like Huberman they in make here you slide on ice. I don't know the Whatever foot that. goes out or. Yeah, but it's all bullshit. It's all like BS. Yeah. Yes. And you, you know it is because of the people who go surf, skate, r- switch. You know, you're like, well, clearly this is not a thing. Either way, keep going. Whatever you got. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I think, what do you guys think about, like, the Baker crew? You know, Temple and Sweeten, who, and even you, Brian, till you Cannon. fucking hurt her, her, yeah, sorry, Cannon and Sweeten. Like, Sweeten's stuff's not all on the gram because he's saving it, yeah. but... Uh, Austin Sweeten's been destroying Brighton. Everything. Do you think that the, the like Baker dogs are kind of like the top dogs because they come here and they're just fucking everything up? I think it's probably nice to have people come with a different set of eyes, right? I mean, like, I think that's probably some of the value. And because you haven't seen them ride it, like, you've seen Blake put up all these, not, not everything that he's putting up, but you're like, oh, I've seen him crippler that, I've seen him hit that, I've seen him hit that, where then you get someone like Cannon and you're like, oh, shit, like, new person that you're a fan of riding all of this stuff, and it feels, like, more remarkable. And just, like, people from the Northwest generally are, like, are cooler than people from Utah. Agreed. Agreed. So there's some of that. No, yeah. you know. They're like, more bad boy too. They're just like, I'm gonna come I'm gonna go bigger. Yeah. I'm from fucking big. And that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. Cannon's like, that looks cool. That was nice. Check this out. I'm twelve. <laughs> 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 the sick thing is, is like all that was kind of like his first time there ever. Never seeing it from the bottom. So Oh really? Not when even you're looking only at it. looking at it from the top, it's different. And then he probably looks back and is like, Wow, well. All right, this is a real topic here. How do you deal with FOMO? If you are nursing an injury, Brian, or you have to work, and you see everybody all in North America getting after it, and you just have to, like, watch it. Any pointers? I'm sure our office dogs would like to know. That's a, a tough scenario for people. Yeah, don't watch it is my uh, hot take on that one. I mean, like, when, I, when I'm injured, I try to, to stay as far away from the snowboarding world as I can. Mm. Smart. Mm-hmm. Brian? I mean, you get depressed. I don't believe in FOMO. Mm. I, I mean, he doesn't subscribe because you never miss subscribe. out, Brian. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've never been hurt, but uh, I don't know. I think it's a state of mind. I think it, you need to you need to also concentrate on being happy for others. It's not all about you, and you can watch it and be like, "Fuck, they're getting it." I know that feeling. Maybe you can instead of having FOMO and be so concerned with yourself, you can just you can try and steal a little bit of that energy, even if it's from the little screen, and be like, "Oh yeah, that's." why I'm going to get healthy. Mm. Good stuff. All right, we got a guest, another guest question. We got a shitload of them, so we're just going to pick away through them for the whole episode here. This one's for Seth. Here we go. Hey, this is John calling in from Reno just down the way from you boys. Love what you're doing. Uh, the kid's crying. But this one's for the general. <laughs> hey, just curious. What video part was... Uh, the one in your career that you're most proud of. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Wow. Thanks, John, for the question. Uh, you know, okay, this is kind of sick. Probably nice try because my son was one at that time, and it was like, I got to get it. Just because it was you like, knew. there was like, go out. Go as hard as you can, five days, maybe a week, and then just get back to the fam. So, yeah, a pretty nice try. I mean, dude, shakedown. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Is that the one where you like sniff at the beginning and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah that's a feel good <laughs> part. So. Yeah. First so 270 good. onto a kink, right? Wow. For, through, through the kink. Me? Yeah. No, I think you got no. your shit backwards. 
I, I don't know if I do. Powder dog over here. Be mm-hmm. careful. In uh, remember last time? Oh, well, we were both right. <laughs> we were both right. <laughs> I know. You see Whitey talk about that? I was like, damn. Oh, I, why do you I can't that? claim that. No way. I, I, dude, I think though I remember you were at least real. Like I remember you had a two seventy onto a kink in that part. The, no, that was uh, the one I did. That was a uh, picture of this, and maybe that one. The two, that might have been one of the first two. One of the first ones. I it was like really early on into was, me being like, "Oh shit, really?" Yeah. Wouldn't that have been a talked about point at the time? I don't know. That was like hardly a kink rail though. That was just I, kind of like yeah. a one of those bent, bent, it was bent nice, <laughs> nice for it for sure. Oh, it was perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was begging for when it. When you look at that, you're like, "Yeah, I'm gonna cap to this easy." Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got another guest question. Here we go. Hey guys, Seth Lewis calling in from Golden, Colorado. Thanks for all that you do. I have a couple of questions for everybody in there today. Uh, first, best thing about snowboarding to me is the feeling. What are the best feeling tricks to you guys? Uh, and second question, you guys are such inspirations to so many people, including me. I'd like to know right now, mid-season, what's inspiring you? Thanks so much. Can't wait to hear it. Bye-bye. What's your best feeling trick, Brian? <laughs> Thanks, Dorger. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, fuck. Um, I think the best feeling trick is a uh, frontside 720 when you come around with your last access, like a little bit, like, I don't know if it's like under your body so that you land with your toe edge like straight into the landing with like no washout and i don't know for me like that that one is just like the yeah that's probably that's the a best great answer feeling. buds is a powder turn a trick yeah Definitely. that is a trick that's, i mean is there anything better feeling mm-hmm. than that i i used to like late back side 180s a lot back I, in the day i think catching a lot of fucking air feels better than a powder turn personally but powder turns are great uh, I got to go back 180, just kind of back like, 180, like a big park jump, straight up, just a big park jump, floating a back 180. Respect, that's good. I'd have to say front seven and pow for sure, and a back lip on a rail, like a hand Oof, rail. God, no matter, that one's good. No matter what, you do a back lip, you feel like you just did something. You tuck it in on the inside yeah. a little bit, nose down. Yeah, when you're when you're committed from the get go, from the ollie, yep. that's good. Tour gear, um, I like. To do switchback fives into pow now, mm. like the like right now, that's what I feel the best when I do because it's kind of like what Brian yeah. was saying because you kind of come around and your board kind of just hits the ground exactly the way it feels like it's supposed to, and you can just ride away and your landing track is like dead straight. Mm. I feel like I don't know about you. I think you have like better air awareness than I do, but like. I felt like I unlocked like a little thing when I was like learning to do tricks where like when I imagined instead of like spinning off the lip and hoping that I spun at the like timing to get to the landing instead of like imagining the whole thing so you stop when you're when you so your like body is actually stopping when you hit the landing like I felt like I was like oh okay I think I understand how to spin now instead of like when you're learning you just go off the lip and you're like like I don't, 540 maybe <laughs> you know like <laughs> maybe instead you're like looking at the jump and be like oh, okay i'll spin like this fast and i'll be done with the rotation right when i hit the ground or something mm-hmm. i mean what about when you do the crazy like lots of flipping and spinning i feel like, like you can do a lot in the air too with like speeding up and slowing yeah, down yeah, rotations yeah. but when with you're doing like what's the most you've ever spun uh, I've spun 1800, but like backside 16, and yeah, well, 1620 is just like the the one that I have done consistently. You could go do that. I don't know now, but maybe. And does that feel good or more just feels like a lot, a lot of like, work? Okay, yeah, a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. but but that. <laughs> but I mean, it's good when you when you when you land it. It's good. Yeah, yeah. You kind of feel like you cheat at death a little bit, you know. <laughs> Every time <laughs> that that cork ten you did the other day had to feel impeccably good. Yeah, that felt good. I was <laughs> like backside, frontside, frontside, frontside. You did a frontside double cork ten eighty on this jump that hasn't been hit since like decade, 
and the landing. I was up in the tree, so he kind of landed under me, and I was just like, yeah. The swimming He just pool? went right through it, just like so perfect. Kind of came down like the front seven. You were just jam your toes crazy. in. Crazy. Did oh. you grab melon? Yeah. Yeah. So good. The, the second part of the question is what inspires you during the season? I can take this one if nobody wants. Uh, it's kind of like deep, I guess, but uh, I've been thinking about mortality lately and the fact that we aren't going to live forever. And <clears throat> so I guess I've been cherishing the time in the mountains with my friends lately and like taking it in, which is a very deep answer, I know. But um, I guess enjoying the mountains with my friends and the time I'm up there like to its fullest is been inspiring to me lately. That's a great answer. Yeah, I love it. Kind of cheesy. <laughs> it kind of is. I'll give you that. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. No, I mean we're good we're normally answer, we'll, 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 we'll go dipshit mode yeah, for sure, yeah. but I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it out of dipshit mode for a second. What's your uh, dipshit answer? Well, I can take us right into dipshit mode with this question. So here we go. What's up, boys? Long time listener, first time caller. Send love from the East Coast. You guys always talk about everybody needs to have a good shit their pants story. How about we hear some of yours? Cheers. I mean, Buds has got a slew of them. We've talked about them a lot. Any other takers? Oh, I got a good one. Let's go. Wait, what did he say? Shit, Shit your, your pants. pants story. Oh, yeah, definitely. The, or, y- the year that Big Bear started that, um, you know, they had the rails at the bottom of the, at Bear Mountain. Hot dogs. Could, no. No, no, no. Like, it wasn't a contest. They just had, like, rails at the, at the plaza. At the, the, whatever it was, yeah. Mm. Closet. They had, like, an opening contest to, like, open it up, and there was an S-rail. And this was, like, real early on. I think John Jay had, like, a back lip in some standard video, but, like, S-rails were super, like, cool at the time. Like, you could get a trick on an S-rail and put it in your video part, that, you know, like, that era. And uh, I was like, oh, I'm going to back lip this thing. First one, like, kind of went little soft went off one side the second one i like didn't commit to it so i went off the right side i was like all right i'm just gonna bury it like so hard and my you know like that back lip where you're like no full commit full commit nose like fully loads up throws me off and i taco the rail enough that i hit my knees and my head on the wood part that like was between the railing and when that happened it just pushed shit like out of my pants <laughs> like full shit not not diarrhea or anything like full turds and you i got just log you had yeah. one in the we're chamber we're talking log in the oh, chamber it's yeah. like like uncontrollable i got up and i was like oh my god <laughs> and then i had this moment where i was like what do i fucking do this is in a contest there's like people everywhere like are you good and i was like oh, i'm chilling i'm just chilling and walk over <laughs> kind of snuck out of there went into the parking Locked lot all weird <laughs> Took my waddle. boots, I like hid behind this RV because I didn't know what to do. Took my boots, my pants off, t- underwear, poop out of butt, threw it under the RV, snowboard pants back on, went back and finished the contest. Wow. Yeah. How'd you do your next run? I forgot we're on live. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got the boys were just telling stories. <laughs> Well, that's incredible. That's a great story. Now, Torgear, I know you've hit some big ass park jumps. You've had to shit yourself at some point. I I don't. I haven't You're... shit myself on snow. Oh, okay. Ever. But you have in life, right? I have in life. Okay. okay. I have in life. Yeah. I've had a couple of uh, of uh, fart scenarios to turn into shit scenarios. A shark, which is like, yeah. yeah, a shark. Um, a couple of those, but uh, it's been a while. I've had I had one. I think it was about three years ago, um, where I was at home. And uh, I was in the elevator going up to where I was living at the time and uh, just let one rip and uh, shat my pants. Mm. Anybody else get in the elevator? Because that could be pretty devastating for I the other very happy patrons. To, I'm very happy to tell you that no one else was mm. in the elevator. Shit in your pants at home is a yeah. grade A move right yeah, there. That's good. <laughs> Bud's had a devastating one where uh, the bathroom on the way back from... Mona. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we're if legally <laughs> yeah. legally if we're allowed to talk I don't about want that. The people to find out about <laughs> that that work in that restaurant. I had to close it down after. <laughs> yeah. Spackle. I got a, I got a good one. Yeah, hit it, Seth. I got a good one. We were filming for Happy Hour, Whitey's Happy Hour, and it was me and Maddie Ryan and maybe Forgash. Maybe not though. I can't remember. But anyways, we we're hitting, you know that bountiful spot. Uh it's at the park. It's kind of like JP did, was doing like the table to table, and he did like the 
Yep. Super sick front board on that rail. Anyways, they're straight rails, kind of steep, donkey at the bottom. Yep. Matty Ryan front lip. Mikey yeah. LeBlanc front lip as well. Yeah. The, we, I was doing the one that was uh, switch front side for me. And I was like, on this trick, right? Switch front board. And I was like, super, super hyped. Okay, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Slipped out on the toes, right? Right from the get on. Went straight to kink. Right on, like, right above, you know, right on my belt line. Because broke my belt in three. So, you know, you have a belt loop. A Bakota belt. tool belt? Or what are we talking about? Yeah, I think it was like a Vulcan belt. <laughs> oh, I don't okay. know what it was. But anyways, it broke here, here, and split in the middle. I'm talking like probably should have been in the hospital. Your belt anyways, might have saved your life. Oh, man, it could. Well, it probably hooked me up, actually, because I think I got hooked up. Anyways, total intestine devastation laying there just dying like i think there's probably a clip in the in the in the after hours <laughs> and maddie comes up to me he's like are you okay man and i'm like uh, was just, just dying right and, he, and then he, and then he's all i think you shit your pants <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i definitely shit my pants but i think i got bigger problems than that but luckily I, you know i went and got cleaned up but that was like serious serious like could add an intestinal ble- bleeding or whatever mm-hmm. but nothing happened probably filming three days later so yeah <laughs> live to fight another day it was insane i didn't know what to do though i was like in the chevron getting cleaned up and i'm like what do i do here you know mm-hmm. it was everywhere there was no there was no jet there was there was no keeping that in mm. like you said mm. Mm. no keeping it in Mm-mm. buds you want to chime in you know when i was young i remember uh you know when you used to get rad pants from like the army navy stores I got something to shred in, and it was my first day riding with them in Bolton Valley. And I got up to the top of the lift and realized I had to shit. And I ended up having diarrhea in my new pants. And I remember it went all the way through into my boots. Oof. And I had to, I went down to the bathroom to clean up. And that's when I realized that the pants, the long underwear, into the boots. Oof. I had to, like, leave. Luckily, is that when you're young, you, like, go up with your little bag and you have other clothes there. But I had to just throw everything out. Mm. It's a tough go, but it was, it was a rough day. Tough go. Yeah. Changed and went back up, though. Yeah. I got a shit story. I've sh- shared it on air already, so we're going to keep it moving. All right. Um, <laughs> let's get into heater clips here, uh, Seth. Heater clips. So I think we're going to start this thing off with the human bowling ball. Torgear sent this one over. Uh, why don't you describe what's happening here, Torgear, for the listeners that can't see this? Yes, this uh, is uh, two weeks ago, last week maybe. Uh, not a lot of snow in Europe. Oh uh, <laughs> icy Dude. conditions. And uh, a lot of people who probably shouldn't be on the mountain, on the mountain. And it looks like they're going up a rope toe, uh, and basically, or T-bar. And T-bar, he's, yep. he slips out at the top of an icy T-bar and yeah. takes out all the other T-bar goers like a bowling ball, for, uh, knocking over every <laughs> pin. Yeah, for everyone li- uh, watching, uh, he made a valiant effort to try and stay on that T-bar <laughs> for a long time before Look, he let go. Though. The yard sale. Did you though. shoot this? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No. But um, yeah, so that entire everywhere. that entire steep part before the top, he almost made it to the top, but he was hanging on for dear life that whole way up. I, I, oh wait, I, those are other people's skis. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's on a board. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's a garage wow. sale. It's a full devastation. I do got to kind of empathize with the man, though. Like, coming from, I didn't grow up on T-bars or rope toes. Those like, are they're harsh. Man, sometimes I'll get, like, I think maybe Sauce Fay or something. There's yeah. one where I'm I'm halfway up it thinking, this is fucked. Like, yeah. I do this for my job, and this is pretty hard. And I got, like, an eight-year-old behind me just full confidence. Happy to be there. Yeah, happy to be <laughs> there. I'm like, Jesus. All right, we got a Marcus Cleveland double Todio 1440. This is uh, almost Nolly. Torgir, Torgir, you, you actually might know a thing or two about this. What's going on here? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it says 1080 tail graph, so even the even the uh, experts who write the trick name got it wrong. So I don't think anyone really knows what's going on here. Yeah, wait, he just what? nollies, pops off the nose, and just spins like a. That's almost not even torpedo. a toe pop. What is that? Fourteen forty. It's not a 1080. No, it's, it's a fourteen forty. Oh, see, there's a t- three sixty right there that no. Did one he really win sees. with this? He did another giant spin, like an 1800 yeah. as well. He did a backside 18, and then this, and, and I think that. he won. He right? won, yeah. And that's what, I love the you different. You see his nose go. Dude. Yeah, yeah, Axis. that's a nolly. 100%. His nose like snaps. That ain't a B-Fox toe pop. B-Fox no. ain't popping like that. That's, 
I, this is incredible. That is sick. Imagine <laughs> how fun it'd be to be like I, like, it's just that I could I could FOMO that you like look at a kid like that and you're like, what does a day feel like for you at the park? I mean, maybe Torger could answer the question, but you know, you look at that and you're like. The first time you tried that, what the fuck happened? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because we're looking at, like, question. a finished product. But at some point, homie's going full speed at, like, an 80-foot jump thinking, I'm burying the nose right on the end of this jump. <laughs> 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 you seen his mess-ups, like, his air awareness, though? Yeah. He, like, he just squirrels back to his feet. It's yeah. unbelievable. He's got a – he's starting to unlock the butter. I think we got a butter clip. This is, like – I don't even know what these MFM no yeah. grab. I don't even know what the hell that was. It's Torque like a light thing. You have to that, like Torque slow gear? it down to see the butter. Yeah, that was a butter and then the backside double nine, I guess. Holy but shit. yeah. Shout and then out. Seth, did you send him this all baby yellow kit? <laughs> 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 I mean, I yeah. <laughs> I did. Nice one. <laughs> He's rocking the full peach right now. Well, this is sick. actually a great uh, debate. Is this a, is snowboarding art form or a sport? Because when I look at this, this shit looks like a sport to me, dude. He's doing sports. No. He's doing sports. He's sports. doing sports, dude. That kid's doing sports, man. I mean, no, it's not when a he's sport. He's dressed like a tennis ball. <laughs> he's spinning like a tennis ball. That's a sport. <laughs> dude, dude it is MFM vibes, though. Yeah, his arms up. I think you shouldn't say that anymore. <laughs> It's um, not a sport. It's, it's not art. a sport, or people wouldn't argue about results at contests. No one argues who won the jazz game. Oh, that's how you define sport. Yeah, that's, yeah, but there's yeah. different sports, that, aren't there? No, no. Here's the deal, dude. All it, real here's sports. The, here's the deal. Let me just take the. All I'm gonna sports. hijack this conversation. Yeah, hijack. If it, you, you're a full jock, I go back and forth. I go back and forth on this. I, I don't know what the fuck weighs up if it's an art <laughs> or a sport, but it's a fun debate. But to me, when you watch Zoe at the Olympics, and it's her final run, and she puts a back 10 down and lands at the bottom landing, and I am on my feet screaming. That has the same effect to me as a sport. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, because it's like clutch, there's a climax, there's a go-to moment, and and I know that that pisses people off, but like, in, in that context, I think it's a sport. I think in a video part, or the way Mike Rav does it, or the way a lot of people do it, or the way... You know, it's totally an art form in other ways, or or a lifestyle, or whatever you want to call it. But that's my argument for in some time and a place, it's a sport, creative outlet. Brian, Giraffe. you want to throw a uh, shoot a hole in my theory? No, I don't. I mean, I'm fine to disagree because it. Even the fact that we disagree means I'm right. Like no one is wondering if basketball is a sport. Because we're arguing if it's a sport, it means it's not a sport. It's just a culture-based thing that people love or don't love, and that can affect you in, like, an amazing way that you relate to how you feel about sports. But, yeah, the argument that Seth is sitting over there deciding that uh, Mike Rav is, is equally as valuable as Marcus Cleveland winning the Olympics is, like, the... The argument that it's not. Marcus Cleveland didn't win the Olympics. I don't. I don't even watch. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like it's like a. It's it because we debate it. Like no one's wondering. Like, do you think tennis is a sport, or are we all just out here doing it because we love the culture? It's like no. It's just done to win. People are arguing chess is a sport. And Anyone? Uh... Chess is a sport. Is it? Well, yeah, because it's just a game, winner or loser. There's no, like... like. Well, why is there a debate on whether chess is a sport or not? I don't know who's debating that. A lot of people. Oh, really? That's a huge debate. What do you think Terrier says? He's, I know he's always trying to get people to play chess on that app. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't like sports. So, you know. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Seth? Do you think it's a sport? I want to hear Seth's take. I don't know. I just wake up at 5 and go to Brighton. <laughs> 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 Flies off a cliff. Is. That's all it is. <laughs> Um, is it a sport? Well, you know, I think for some people, it's probably a sport. They train, they go hard, they just are determined. They're gonna go get it. For other people, it's an it's an art form. I think it's undefinable. I think snowboarding is undefinable, and there's infinite possibilities. So I want to hear what the Olympian has to say over here from Norway. Well, I definitely feel like there is a sport aspect to it. At least um, there's also a a very clear non-sport aspect to it as well 
like um, with the creative outlet. But I like for me, it's very hard to to like watch the Olympics or watch a freaking FIS World Cup and say that that's not a sport because all those people in those bibs spinning all those rotations, that's like, it, yeah, that's a sport to me. For Good. sure. Love it. Good, well-rounded debate. We're going to keep it moving. Yet there's, more... yet there's not a clear winner. There isn't, yeah. De- is there a, is debating a sport? I don't know. Exactly. I'll keep going. Exactly. <laughs> 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 All right, we got a clip of Julian Gluck doing this uh, closeout. Oh, oh, to, oh. Dude, basically the only out is that you run into a wall, and he goes 50-50. And hits a straight on wall off of a closeout. Unbelievable. Whoa, wow. Clip. That is sick. We'll we should do a smelling salt. Wow. Yeah, let's do a smelling salt for <laughs> that. Let's huh? run through Holy a wall. Let's let's run, that, is a, <laughs> that is a run through. We should send we him should a box. This kid. Let's get this guy a package. Wall. I think this let's is a Let's just find sport. his address, not this tell him, send him one. Give sure. me a freshie. Run into a wall smelling salt. Don't look how hyped that filmer was. I need one more. If he had taken one of these, he actually. Do we have to do this? He would have went through the wall, but if he had taken one of these. You guys have both done this. He would have just never done it. Yeah, I have. We need to get Seth. Seth, our producer, and he's got one. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. How do you do it again? You snap Dude, it, and it's going to turn. Squeeze, you squeeze. Oh. You squeeze. That one went to the face. <laughs> <stuff. laughs> <laughs> 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 wow. Run That's in, a sport. Run into That's a wall. A sport. That's a sport. Had That's he a done this, he would have went right through that wall. There would have yeah. been no debate. Jesus Christ. That Not that went, there was a debate. That one shot. Good. Yeah. Holy shit. That was an amazing clip. Buds is a master debater, actually. So I, I mastered uh, the debate. So we, we're going to get into uh, another clip. We got, I just have it labeled out of control guy, um, as you can see. Oh. Uh, it's almost I like a wakeboard. I watched a hundred times trying to figure out if it was real or not. No, it's like a wakeboard uh, flip when they hold onto the handle kind There's of. There's like oh, yeah, frames. Yeah, yeah. Air, uh, Air Rayleigh. Air Rayleigh. Yeah, There's yeah. frames where I'm unsure if it's real. You think this is a conspiracy, Buds? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Did I watch it frame yeah. by frame? No, I think this is what happens if you just kind of let that thing take you for a Dude. ride. <laughs> that reminds me of the, the person at uh, Mammoth who flies off that jump. Yeah, oh, exactly. That so I and I was like, is this that. real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one too. I watched that over and over. Is it real? Another one we're wondering if it's real is the Pat Fava snow skateboard slide. Is this a conspiracy, buds? Uh, this is real. This is that real. That kid is good. Wow. Shit. Yeah, that, I can't believe he did that. I don't That's think I would do that right strapped there. in. That's also a smaller lip than a lot of the <laughs> dust box video. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, honorable mention, That's Joey crazy. Joey Fava, we don't have the clip, the wall right on the rock. That was, was insane. Really oh sick. God. Big props to Joey on that one. <gasps> All right, we're going to do... what? Ha- did, he, did he have any non-makes? I don't I'm know. I'm sure. This? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm right? sure there was a but battle. We don't, have, we don't have any. We don't, have, we don't know the story behind it. Mark Frank hit that rail, right? I mean, yes. he had a pretty, like... Is it like monumental shot on it? I think so. Was the, it kind of the, like the board side? Easy board you know, side. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know the board who, side with open jacket. Keegan Velika yep. cab two back lip oh, that in wow. uh, Bose Rec. That if you're looking wait, wait, wait. Go, go, go back. Is let's it the same that, rail? Let me, yeah, let's same put rail. That, okay, so oh, the fence is there. Keegan Velika okay. cab two it with the fence, I believe, wow. in Bose Rec. That's or, insane. Uh, can we lift it? It's a pretty long rail. It's just that angle so straight on right there. Well, and there's no running. You got to like just build it right up against that backstop. Yeah. All right, we're going to do a little Mike Little appreciation post. He just turned pro. The new Impalers video just came out. And Mike Little is on a no-filler policy. This guy's strictly A-grades, dude. Mm. His new part, not a single filler in there. Everything is pure heat. This one is insane. What? Just floating. Where's this rail, Minnesota? That's Minnesota. I think it's a what are you for, the, going, for right? the listeners who can't see. There is a kid just I hit that. blowing nice. it, killing it, everything, devastation, total devastation. He went board slide gap, board slide, board slide, board slide. Wow, roof, roof, back tail, roof, back tail. Oh wow. shit, that is a lot of consequence. And this is just the end of a part filled with A grades the whole way through. He ain't hitting so, anything little. Yeah, shout out to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mike. Mike not McGinnity so ra- uh, discovered that rail. Do, yeah, does uh, Chad O goes front board oh, blind maybe. through that? Maybe it was Chad. Fr- yeah, front yeah. board fakie. Yeah. Chad and Micah hit Full it. Full blind. That's so sick. Yeah. Whoa. That was the first front board through Kink Same year as JP, kind of a debate, right? His was a, yeah, a little more squared up. But they both, that was the, the pioneer of street rail front boards. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, this, in the um, spirit of smelling salts, we got a Rangers player whacking a smelling salt. So uh, 
these boys are getting fired up in a hockey game. They uh, <laughs> great form. They have a really good Dude, team. Sixteen, really good taking form. it. Yeah, and jo- that's for Joey B. How you doing? We know he's a Rangers fan. And did you send this to him, or did like other humans do this? Oh uh, no, this is just th- we got. We <laughs> wow. actually got smelling salts from hockey. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and Boxing, then, hockey, I've seen it in, in this, there. this is in the world of snowboarding. We have a sledding clip too. Um, it's a kind of a human centipede type of vibe going on here. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. oh yeah, shit! That's that's the human centipede oh, situation. So, uh, buds, what do you think of that? Uh, is this a family show? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that was crazy. And uh, last Boom. one, <laughs> last heater clip. Don't we watch got. Human Centipede either. That's a rough movie. Yeah, right don't watch there. Human Centipede. That's a rough movie. <laughs> Do not recommend. It's one of those things you can't turn off either. How have You're we all like, seen that, <laughs> dude? How have we all? I'm seen ashamed that? that I've seen it, but I couldn't turn it off. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. No, you can't unsee it. So don't see it. The 32 crews make it a video, and uh, they went to a rail, and these are their warm up clips. So we got a tail gap, grab back lip from Phil Hansen. And then we got a front 270 hard way from Austin Viz. These are war- these Besties. are going straight to Graham. Like, what's going in the video? You know, that's what I'm wondering. And then we got P. Fava, a frequent of heater clips going back 270 to Fakey. Uh, these guys are just putting a beat down. Word, word on the street is. Do you think they did other tricks that will go in the video, or they just watch these and they're like, oh, it's... We're, that's not going to make it anyway. That's the spot on the way to the spot for sure. It is. Let me, right? let me yeah. tell you something. Spot. I do that. That's going in the park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You're forty. Yeah. Well, that's a little. Uh, that's a little generous of. You know what I mean. <laughs> We're not there. We're not there yet. The that's a little generous. <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> These kids are in their heyday, dude. They're trying to change. The yeah. Game we're over yet. the hill. I'll give you that. I'll give Those you that. Fava brothers are <laughs> on. Those Fava brothers are good. The Fava bean. Uh, last one we got here is Hot Coco. Um, major shout out to Hot Coco. Incredible video. We got all the ladies killing it here. Nora backlip two seventy. Um, dude, Maria Thompson put the team on her back too. Wow. The tail side two seventy. Yeah, there it is. her steez just on point. Give me that. Thing. Yeah, they killed that spot. That's what and she's got kind of that thing. steezy collar popping oh, out of the sweater. So good. Yeah, yeah the steez kind of popping collars. The kit was good. I don't know about that clip, dude. The nineties landing. Yeah, I don't like. I just go tr- retry that one, right? Maybe dude, that was sick. Wow. You, you gotta him? watch. You gotta watch video. You guys ever watch videos with Sean Lucy? You gotta watch videos yeah. with Sean Lucy. He's telling you when they need to be reshot. Yeah, he's got a hard, he's got a hard <laughs> cut or no cut. Oh yeah, I like it. I'm like, yeah, look through my pow turns. Tell me which one shouldn't go in. <laughs> Yeah, he's got an opinion. He's got an he's opinion. He's got an opinion. Uh, we also we have a guest question about this, uh, but I don't have the actual. I don't think I put it in the podcast. Or let me see if I. Oh, I got it right here. Here we go. Bomb hole squad, self dub number one fan here, long time listener, first time caller, Travis from Splinter's Board Shop. I got a controversial subject. We're talking about music piracy here. Hot Coco comes out. Awesome movie. Amazing writing. Reuses the Gucci Mane song. We're talking Bodie, Rider of the Year, part of the year. This wasn't a, a middle-of-the-road part from a standard movie in 99. I'm, uh, I don't know. I think it takes away a little bit from the overall project. I'm curious uh, what you guys think here. Uh, are we just so saturated it doesn't matter anymore? Are we, uh, we just letting these things slide nowadays? i, I, I got to hear your opinion. Who's taking it? Seth. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> I think it matters for sure. You know, I I think like it's it's very hard to uh, to to know like being in an editing situation or or like if you're a writer and you're picking your part and it's like. Maybe maybe you came up on a song and you were super juiced on it and you're just like, yeah, this is it. And then it goes and then you're like, oh, someone used that. And it's like, ah. But at the same time, like, I feel like, you know, there should be enough of the process to be like, oh, hey, that's been used or that hasn't been used, you know. Especially when it's like a just a one of those iconic parts. I mean, there's got to be just like, I mean, use it, whatever, but it's it's been used. So, you know, try yeah, to, that's try, your project. Try, yeah, a little, it right? does. It does. Cause like, you know, when I hear songs, like if we're talking, like if I hear 
Neil Young, Heart of Gold. Boom. No matter what. Name that video part. <laughs> Baker, The Garden. Yeah, like, no matter what, my brain is always going to go there, and it's that, that you know, I'm going to see that. I'm going to live that. I'm going to feel those feelings. But yeah. you know what I mean? So you, so if someone else just came and dropped that song on a part, it'd be like, dude, come on. I mean, it's also hard because it's Burton. Like, you want more from our, like, brand. If you look, it's, pr- I, the vi- you know, I don't know. Yeah. But Burton's done that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I, I I completely agree with Seth, though, that um, there should definitely be um, not, I, w- I don't want to say, like, a respect for past video parts, but, like, if something's been used, it's been used. Like, we have this same thing when we go hit backcountry jumps. Like, people have done the trick. We're not going to go do the same trick, you know? Like the same spot, yeah. Same spot, same trick. Like, well, it's cool that you did it, but someone did it like ten years before you. It's like it takes it takes something away from it. It's like it could still be a sick shot, but it's still gonna take something away from it because people have actually seen that exact shot before. You know, and I don't think Burton actually makes. They hire different people to make different well, movies, right? The si- the situation, if you look at that movie's produced by Maria and her agent. And it's a, it's honestly a damn shame because it's a fucking incredible video. Like it's the writing, it, it's so monumentally good. The bar is set so high. Their style is so good. It's a fucking pivotal video for snowboarding, and and like you're watching the tricks, they're phenomenal. But when you when you do reuse a song like that, it just fucking you're shooting yourself in the foot because. Bodie had a writer of the year part to that same monumental. Yeah. It's not like you said, not middle of the road. So, so these things are important. I think if if you are a filmmaker in snowboarding, it is your duty to know what songs have been used and not used. Because if you reuse a song, you're gonna get made fun of, and nobody wants that. So, call your buddy that's a nerd that watches yeah. the videos and say, "Hey, here's a rough draft. I'm thinking about using these songs. Oof, don't touch that one. That one's been yeah. used." So it's your duty. If you reuse shit, you're going to get made fun of. Like, you're going to get called out. And if you redo a trick, it's your duty as a snowboarder to know what tricks have been done on the rail, what tricks have been done on the jump. And if you don't, like, I did an ABD on Red Ledge. Fucking come at me. I deserve to get made fun of for it. It was a fucking, it was a sin. It was a cardinal sin in the unwritten rules of snowboarding. So that's my rant. But I think, like, if you're going to film videos, you need to know what's been done on the spots, and you can't fucking reuse music. And reusing a song let's, is one thing, but reusing a monumental, huge one that yeah. everybody... I mean, I can picture Bodie up on that mountain going, oh, 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 Gucci. Yep. Yep. That shit was hammer. Let's get let's get Holden to create the, the database. The Google, <laughs> we, Google Doc. We need a Google Doc Ooh. Ben Hughes song database. That's a heavy task. I mean, remember, in, we, just, we just watched Gen Pop. Like, it was sick. We had, like... Ollie and Torgir are in the room. They're watching Represent. Sick. They watch Gem Pop. They're all hyped. So sick. But dude, Hebel, <laughs> reusing Heartbreakers. Mm-hmm. And that was JP's Ender in Warriors. You know what I mean? So close. What, what, how many years apart there? Uh, t- it, wasn't, it was under a decade. Yeah, like was, probably five. That was probably my fault. Yeah, Bud's editing. I'm uh, a heartbreaker. I, I might have picked we're, that we're song. All, I think we're all victim in one, one regard. You know what I mean? I mean, or... Offenders, I guess. Yeah, was that what you would call them? I wasn't a victim. Well, there's what a about the, or song. What about the tribute? Because yeah, there, the there's a tribute sick. where you can go and get permission. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. But you, you're still like, yeah, because there's so many people who have relationships with these video parts. They have, like, their mind that like, goes there when they mm-hmm. hear the song. You know, so that's what I'm not taking anything away from from uh, from the video. Hot Coco was insane. But you're competing with what I remember Bodhi's part was. Yeah, and if you don't insane, match it, you're in trouble. You know? it's, or so even it's, if you do, it's like, yeah. You just can't do it. Yeah. We got a great YouTube question. Somebody's asking, what about cross pollinating skate and snowboard songs? Like an iconic skate part in a snowboard video? What's your guys' take? Yeah, what is the rule on that? Again, you just, I don't know. You don't wanna, you don't wanna like make it part of your story. It's just better off, like, to not. It can be done, and it can be fine, and people can have their arguments of, like, oh, this part, you know, was 
I remember Vole's Rider of the Year part from some absence video. I can't remember which one. Um, he reused a Liam Pelosi song from the year before from, I can't remember which, which video it was, but I remember being like, oh, shit. Like, just in any way, like, I don't like that moment when your brain goes like, this song's been used. Even if then, even if you one up the whatever, you're like, eh. it like gives you this, like, I love to go into like dreamscape when I watch films and remove myself from reality. And those things break you out of it when you go back into like, oh, you like stop immersing yourself in the art and you go, <laughs> oh, someone used this song. That's weird. I, I wonder if they, I wonder if they know or did they not know? Like, that's weird. I wonder, did they ask if they could use, you know? So I think the vibe is just like, Pick your own music, especially now. You're like, homie, go on Spotify. Like, this shit is not hard anymore. It's endless to, like, you could go click on that song, and Spotify will tell you songs that are similar. Like, users who like this song also like X, Y, and Z. It's like, click on those. Use one of those. Like, It's also, I think it's, like, music and snowboard videos is sacred, right? We all yeah. grow up. We put it in our truck driving up to the hill. You grow up on you know, soundtracks from Mac Dog and et cetera. Yeah. And I think the art of finding those songs and like searching them out is like, is beautiful. Like you want to, you know, we all yeah. have the friends that are like music heads that you're like, oh, like I'm going to hit up this person. They know, they know some music. Yeah. Like that, that hunt is also kind of sick yeah, it's too. it's lovely. Yeah, there's I'd say steer there. clear, dude, and steer. add to the culture because you also never know if you're going to be the one making that part. You know, that like, I think that's, I would imagine Seth, you know, being on the editing side of it, I can definitely say that I'm like, oh, I want, if I'm editing something, I want to give myself the chance of it being one of those things that someone references in their brain, and there's no chance if you're using someone else's, like, iconic song, so. Yeah, it should change something in your head when it clicks. Yeah. It's also... A gut-wrenching feeling just like oh it's been used oh no yeah because it's oh, especially yeah. when it's too late oh. yeah. so when I, you find out for the first time that you blew it that's a tough one yeah i i feel for maria and them because yeah. it's a fucking great video they killed it yeah so. it's like why give it a reason to take it down a notch <clears throat> yeah, I, I gotta sometimes be honest there's cases i didn't when yeah. they're like two videos are happening at the exact same time and they come out and it's like the that's same a crazy song one he's like how you, how, you're never gonna yeah. know, you know. Yeah. Just as a you ever chance. hear that uh, Rick Rubin talking about creativity? Like he's like talking about something like this. He's like, you ever have an idea, and you you're like, oh, I need to do something about this, but you don't, and then really quickly after, someone else does it, and you're like, that was my fucking idea. And it and the way he explains it is like, it wasn't your idea. It was the timing of the universe like bringing those things together, that art, that music, that timing, that other people who think similarly will do it and will affect the like community that you live inside of. He's obviously talking about producing music, but for us it does feel like that in snowboarding, like there's this ramp up of like a certain type of artist or a certain type of thing or art or whatever and you're trying to correlate your snowboarding to it and then someone else does it and you're like, they fucking bit me and it's like no the universe was pushing a shitload of people in the same direction and that's why it becomes iconic or like resonates with people because like like the mass population in our community is like feeling the same energy and wants to like put it out into the world but it's chaos theory yeah that makes sense it's like 3 a.m there's nobody on the road stop sign boom you're there with another car <laughs> yeah true right <laughs> It's called chaos theory, people. <laughs> I like that chaos theory. All right. Uh, on a bit of a heavier note, uh, we're going to do a quick ode to Ken Block. Um, he passed away recently. Um, fucking such a huge supporter of our show. We lost a, a special one. Our heart goes out to his family. Um, it's just kind of incredible what human, what one human can accomplish in, in 55 years and, and the amount of inspiration that he spread, and it's just unbelievable, man. Uh, heartbreaking, but also inspiring to to live for those and live fully. And uh, yeah, just wanted to take a second to remember Ken. 
All right. I got a little, I got a little kin. Yeah. Uh, I grew up maybe 40 minutes away from where the, I don't know if it was original, but during, when I was in high school, the, it was Dub Drawers in DC Warehouse. And he, uh, once a year they would have a factory sale, like, you know, like misprints, whatever, but it was huge. It wasn't like, like it would, they would open the factory and you'd be like going through the, the aisles of stuff. Either way, like for the town I grew up in, which wasn't, you know, it was like lower middle class. It was amazing. The day before the sale, people dressed a certain way. The day after the sale, it was like dub drawers DC, head to toe, every kid. And it was amazing. Like, you know, half the kids weren't skateboarders or snowboarders or surfers. It was just like, yo, this is the best place in this area to like get dope clothes for like a reasonable amount of money. And I remember always just being like, like, I don't know, seeing their vibe as like part of this industry that I was like really, really attracted to because he felt like so from it, you know, like he was like such a, um, authentic part of the community and even that like i'm like he probably there's probably better ways to get rid of it but like the vibe in there felt like it wasn't just them getting rid of their shit he was like yo we got all this stuff and like it was the best way to just get it into the people that he resonated with hands like instantly and i don't know i've uh, like from afar i've always been such a huge fan of like everything he did and listening to him on the bomb hole it was definitely like i was like damn i'm like maybe more in awe of like how he operated business and pleasure than, than I'm almost anyone that I've come in contact with, like, you know, operating on that fine line of like what's life and what's business. So yeah, to everybody that he was close to, you know, like, you know, it's just give you a, a virtual hug. Cause that shit's just, you know, it's not sad for him. He lived an amazing life. It's just sad for everybody here, you know, who's just mm -hmm. like, fuck, life isn't as good um, without someone like that in it. And that's like what we all should aspire to be is like when you leave for people to be like, you know, missing you or whatever. So, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> just to kind of keep adding to that too, you know, he he supported Buds and I with the show really heavily. He would fly in guests to come Whoa. that he wanted us to talk to. And and after his episode came out, we we became pretty close and and spent a lot of time snowmobiling and and dirt biking and doing. We shared the same hobbies. But the one thing I admired so much about him as a guy that was so successful in business was an even better family man. He took such good care of his family. And a lot of times it's not that balance, you know. And. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty special. So we got to snowmobile with him a couple of days before he passed. And then, and then our, my friend Stu and Clay were with him when he passed snowmobiling. And we went, they were like, guys, we got to, like Ken would want us to go sledding. So I went sledding with Stu and Clay uh, their first time after Ken passed. And I checked my GPS <clears throat> when we got back to the truck. And we had gone 43 miles. And that's KB. Wow. He's 43. And so um, I don't know. I don't know what that means. It seems pretty special and serendipitous, but uh, what would he want? He'd want us all to live to our fullest. So, fucking love you, Ken, and uh, the family, and <sighs> yeah. All right, <clears throat> let's change gears here. Heavy one to pick up from. We're gonna talk about autumn headwear, though, buds. Let's do it. Uh, they're a supporter of the show. They always uh, have a reminder that style matters. I believe Brian might be a founder or has yeah, something to do with Autumn. See? Yeah, and what's, what's the deal? Uh, started by Brad Alban. Um, definitely like a industry heavyweight that I've always respected. And he kind of just saw a gap in the market and wanted to make like stylish considered headwear coming from like a place of art and culture. And I think he's done an amazing job. He's... Uh, yeah, just for me, basically just getting the boxes. I'm just like every beanie's sick. Cool, <laughs> you know. 
Well, we, did, we did a collab with them, too. Yeah, right? we got a collab beanie. And uh, if you're interested in checking them out, go to autumnheadwear.com. Use promo code BOMBHOLE for 20% off. And with that, I think it's time for our favorite part of the show. BNN, folks. Oh, wow. Welcome to BNN, Buds' News Network. Hello, and welcome to BNN. So I was looking around uh, for things to talk about on BNN, and I found this crazy thing that dolphins eat puffer fish, which are poisonous to humans, right? But they sit around, they pick apart, apart the puffer fish, and uh, it hits them like acid, which is kind of crazy. And they, uh, they'll they be found hanging around in a group of like four or five and uh, passing around this puffer fish, and they dip the nose into the into out right out of the water, and I guess it's just like looking in a mirror. And uh, it led me to think, man, what other animals get high out there? And I put a little collection together of images. Um, there's a couple more of the dolphins. This is kind of what, what life is like for them out there with the puffer fish. And uh, it just must be amazing. Uh, I found out wallabies actually get high on opium, and they make crop circles because they run around in circles <laughs> while they eat the opium. And... Uh, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing. Here are a couple of the versions of their crop circles. Elephants chew on this marlula tree, and here's an elephant <laughs> humping a car after he uh, chewed on this tree. Reindeers eat magic mushrooms, and uh, if you look into this one, apparently it's how Santa Claus and Rudolph and all that, they were all on acid, apparently, and Christmas was founded. I don't know the whole story, but <laughs> jaguars um, actually take ayahuasca, and... Uh, they turn into little kittens and roll around, but you don't want to be hanging there when it wears off, apparently. Bats, um, <laughs> they chew on these uh, little berries, and it gets them super drunk, and apparently they can get as drunk as they want and still fly and not have any problems. And uh, I wish humans were like that. We'd be able to drink, drive, whatever, but we can't, so drink responsibly. Um, <laughs> caterpillars actually do cocaine. They chew on the coca leaves and get high. And then the monkeys at St. Kitts, this special island, they'll steal your cocktails and they get drunk. And they found out it's kind of like the whole ecosystem of humans. As these monkeys developed and they drank more, they started being uh, f- caught with bottles. They started kind of lounging in the zones and uh, hanging at the bars. And, and then it became a problem and they became alcoholics and now they're all in AA. This is all <laughs> a true story. And that is uh, animals getting high. The uh, In Scotland, there was uh, a case of two grandmothers that wanted to help out their son get out of debt. So they uh, got a bunch of drugs, and uh, they were found with uh, 21,000 pounds of uh, cocaine, or 553 grams of cocaine, which has a street value of 21,000 pounds. And they got caught with all these baggies. They were like, I think they were 67 and and whatever, but they found out they were just trying to help their son and... Now the poor grannies are in jail. And uh, this next one is a ghost lover or a ghost fucker, as some will say. She has slept with 20 ghosts. She actually broke up with her husband on a trip when she found out she uh, she could, like, enter the spirit realm and actually have sex with ghosts. And then she went on to have 20 different relationships, and she actually claims she's part of the uh, Mile High Club with the last one that met with her, she brought it home, and they had sex on a plane. And she's this whole this, this whole thing around her in the UK. But it's like, man, it's hard enough for some of these single guys to get women. You got to compete with the the uh, the the afterlife. That's hard enough, right? <laughs> uh, this next this next deal, um, they found out farting in front of your partner leads to a stronger and healthier relationship. <laughs> so uh, let them loose, let it go when you're hanging with your significant other tonight. Uh, next, we're going to get into snow talk, all this talk about powder panic. Um, you know, we're out with our crews. We're building and shaping jumps in the streets in the backcountry. I'm always wondering, what are normal people doing with snow? What are civilians doing with snow? And uh, they're out sculpting it, too. That, that last one was a drunk person on a uh, bench. This is a shark. The next one is a uh, great white. Wow. We got uh, this That's dude sick. made a dope car, even made it purple. <laughs> Um, this is a, a cry for help, I guess. Something's going on in there. Might want to find out. Might want to go check those people out. Uh, this is a car fucker. Uh, we got a blow job in the streets. And then these are coming my favorite here because I appreciate this. An outhouse. If you can't find a good place to poop in the streets, just make one out of snow. And so, uh, here's a toilet. Here's a, uh, used toilet. 
Uh, these guys are busy out there, man. It's when people just have enough time on their hands, they build a thousand snowmen. Uh, this next one is uh, if Breezy was out there, his crew, they'd be making freaking <laughs> overachieving out there, building a Statue of Liberty with some tools. Come on, guys, mellow out. Uh, and then my favorite, let's go to Florida. Oh, here we go. So I was looking around, you know, everyone, actually people hit me up and they're like, Florida, why are you always dissing Florida? So I wanted to figure out, man, is it just Florida? Why are we always picking on Florida? Let's check out what's going on in the rest of the world. So uh, here we go. Here's some some Florida antics in the rest of the world. Uh, this is another one for the weather. Get ready for a pounding. Some of us could see at least eight inches out there or more. That's too much, even for me. <laughs> What's that guy talking about, right? Uh, this next guy, Sneaky Australian. Oh, I guess we missed that one. So we're going to go to oh, he's Sneaky Australian. So a meth addict dresses up as a cop, raids another drug user's home to steal their meth, right? Sneaky dude. Smart. Homeless at Walmart. Homeless couple found living in Walmart, attic, with a hot plate, meth lab, and 42-inch LED TV. Things are getting real loose in Walmart these whoa, whoa, days. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That looked like Bob. Bob Plum. Bob That's Plum. Bob Plum. Right there. Bob has another life. Yeah. That's Bob. 100%. That's Bob, Bob Plum. Plum. If you need help and you're sure. trapped in a Walmart, let us know. <laughs> uh, this guy's actually from Florida. I just want to see how he holds up. Florida drug dealer calls 911 to report missing cocaine. <laughs> Hopefully they helped him find it. Uh, this guy is a legend here. Man preparing for No Nut November dies after masturbating 62 times straight on October 31. <laughs> Poor guy. I didn't know you could die from masturbation, but apparently he hit the limit. Uh, these next guys, trapeze artists with diarrhea shits on 23 people. <laughs> Glad I was not at that show. Torger. <laughs> so uh, this, this is one of my favorite. Hey, man, I'm at this search party. Woman accidentally joined search party looking for herself <laughs> after eating edibles. Uh, so uh, this next one is uh, we got there. We go. School bans Valentine's Day after six year old tells teacher he would plow her into next week. They had to take the uh, his cards off the cancel Valentine's Day. Whatever. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this. Uh, this guy, they put at one of those those cameras in the woods to try to see what the wildlife's doing. They found a man on LSD creeping around back there naked, running on all fours. That's a real real news story. The uh, next one is fart lightning. A, a uh, fart fumes caught with lightning and blew this chick's toilet up. True story in, I think it was in Australia or something. Uh, this guy's got his little squirrel named D's Nuts, and he got in trouble for his meth fed attack squirrel. And that's uh, another true story, not in Florida. This next one is, what do we got? Oh, yeah, this guy was going to go rob a store, and he, they caught him on the tape stretching first <laughs> out front. You got to make sure you're not going to get hurt. You got to stay limber out there Straight before up. you go rob a store. <laughs> but dude. I think Florida just always takes the cake. It's, uh, all those stories are great. Hurricane Dorian has brought more than just wind and rain. They found 16 bricks of cocaine worth $400,000 on a beach in Florida. And then this guy is the true Florida man. Florida man smokes meth, snorts coke, takes Xanax, passes out, wakes up, and masturbates in hospital, cops say. That's BNN. Oh Welcome to BNN, Bugs' News Network. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Holy shit. That's BNN, folks. <laughs> Buds is it a sport or an art form? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Buds' is News Network, for those who are unfamiliar. Well, we still got a Seattle slew of guest questions, so let's fire a couple of those up. Uh, here we go. Hey, my name is Nick from Idaho. I just wanted to leave a question for the All Banged Up show today. I'm just wondering about the Tommy Gessney uh, bomb hole. Just looking forward to that one. Can't wait to see it. Uh, yeah, you guys have a good time. Peace. Well, uh, we're huge fans of Tom, Thomas. Uh, I've been asking him, so he keeps declining. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know, you know. Does he give you a reason? Uh, Just I don't know. He's a little nervous. Um, some people want to wait until they have some more time passes. I got breaking news, though. Tommy just signed with 686. Wow. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. Big moves. Yeah, big moves. What was he wearing? Adidas, and they're uh, no longer in snowboarding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> All right, we got another guest question. We're going to take, it's more of a voicemail, but. My question for the show today is, what is the craziest and most fun side job you've had while you're in your pursuit and trying to uh, make your career as a snowboarder? So Steve from Massachusetts, appreciate your input. Thanks. Shout out Steve from Mass. I can I can start this one off. Side job, Steve. When I first moved here, uh, low on the funds, I was a, like a guinea pig doing uh, testing for a drug company. So I went in for a seven day drug study. They gave me a drug. I think it was called like naltrexone or something like that. I don't remember what it was called, but it was testing like not fucking like so you didn't get uh, your mind didn't get altered from uh, opioids. And uh, basically, it felt like somebody was, like, smashing me in the head with a hammer. Uh, <laughs> it was actually horrible. What would they pay you? Uh, I got paid, I think it was, like, 2500 bucks for a week. Not yeah, bad. Three grand, maybe three grand for a week. So, yeah, that's, that, that's the first one that comes to mind. I've heard other snowboarders doing that, too. Yeah. You can do month-long studies that wow. pay, like, 10 plus Gs or something like that, I think. Uh, any other takers? I worked at a psychiatric hospital. Wow. Like a closed one with, like... People serving prison sentences. Were you like an orderly, or you're actually like, like a helping Shutter people? Island? No, no, no I was yeah, like, uh, I was like, uh, I would call it. A you're guard, a doctor, but I was just, yeah, I was a psychiatrist, <laughs> Dr. Summer, <laughs> Dr. Torger. No, it was kind of wild. A guard. I had to wear an alarm, and we could never be solo in a room with one of the patients. It was gnarly because of your safety or theirs. Oh, I mean. It, w- it would be job description said our safety. Your safety. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I I, uh, I had a job where I would I was uh, removing concrete floors from mall stores. So you'd go in at like nine p.m. whenever the mall closes, and then just straight jackhammer till sunrise, <sighs> which was uh, pretty good money. But what you find is that the noise and the vibrations like don't leave you so like, <laughs> it's kind of like land sickness once you get off a sailboat you'd be like like i'd feel like my arms were still shaking for like hours after being done but it's good money the old jackhammer huh? classic jackhammer scenario. jackhammer classic from jackhammer scenario I've heard it once heard it again you know similar if you're sharing a hotel room like that backs up to uh tour gears it sounds like there's a jackhammer going all night I don't know what's happening in there, but... Uh, I was, uh, right before I kind of got sponsored, um, there's these, out in the West Desert here, on your way to Wendover, there's, like, some hazardous waste incinerator plants, and it's, like, hazard pay, and I'm, like, young, <laughs> and I'm, like, and they need, they were demolishing them, and they were sure. paying, like, two grand a month, and I was, like, I'm in. Because I needed a stack. You had to wear special equipment. I needed to stack the bisque, you know, yeah, for yeah. a snowboard season. But were you wearing, like, Dude, special suit? It like... was 106 every day, pretty much. At least that's what it felt like. We had Dude, to wear a there, for sure. full Tyvek, full respirator all day long. I think I got down to, like, 135 pounds. Just Dude, sweating in that insane. suit. It was insane. It was 10 hours. Five. We worked five tens. So Friday was, like, all overtime. That's why it was, like, such good pay. But it was crazy. And I now, there. I don't know if that's as good a pay anymore. I don't even know. But it, w- it, Would you do that now for two grand a month? Hell no. <laughs> I probably, like, took years off my life. That's what I'm wondering, there. dude. Is there any, like, weird <laughs> stuff going on? Any... I don't know. That was, like, so much money when I was a kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I was wow. like, I'm snowboarding for, like, three years. Might have added years to your life. Yeah, you true. Maybe. True. I don't know. There was, like, the, all the stuff that I was working with, though, like, because, like, there was sketchy stuff out there but everything that i was kind of handling or like tearing apart that was handling was um after it was burned so then you know there was still some residue because like literally this thing was like going it's burning whatever it's taken down like there's pcbs and all this crazy stuff out there and they literally just shut the switch off walked away and then it's like another company in decontamination contractors come in to like cleaned up years later years so it's sketchy. sketchy yeah we're blow torch and stuff taking stuff down with cranes it was nuts who knows what gases were oh, seeping around even. but do you got any seepage I stories just, <laughs> i used to just work in kitchens man all sorts of kitchens nothing too crazy of a side job there you know what i mean i almost it was almost going to be a career 
I would have been like a chef. So did you go to chef school or something? Or? I was going to. Okay. But I had worked my way up, starting as a uh, hydro ceramic technician, which is a dishwasher, going all the way up to head <laughs> chef. And uh, I was gonna if if something didn't work out, I'd probably be working in a in a uh, kitchen. Hydro ceramic, hydro -ceramic technician. So, so you guys never worked in a kitchen, huh? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So what they call the pearl divers or the the uh, dishwashers. <laughs> Good antics in kitchens, though. It's, it's a good time. Okay, I got another topic here, people. Ageism. <laughs> what are you saying, bro? I don't know. Brian told me we should bring it up. <laughs> I'm just saying how Mikey LeBlanc it, like, has been kind of winning. He's winning at, out like, there. At, like, sponsored snowboarder at Brighton as far as, like, love from the industry, love from other pros. Like, anything that comes out of him is, like, reshared a thousand times and i just look at it like you know part of my job is definitely to like recommend people to brands that i ride for and sometimes i'm like i probably should be re recommending this man to get put on the brands i ride for like if we're just looking at value add like eyeballs you know impressions or you He's know going impressions on them. i don't know or influence you know like you know Homie seems like, I don't know, if you're looking to get somebody who's going to get your gear out there and get eyeballs on it and have people want to dress like them or be like them, it's like, I don't give a shit how old he is. Or maybe I really do because I'm now more impressed that homie's 49, like, chucking carcass. Well, and what a better person to represent your brand, a guy that's ran a company, right? Fuck he's going to yeah. know what to do. Yeah, yeah. he's not going to be... Like, I don't know if I want to post a picture yeah. of the jacket on my Instagram because, like, normally I just post chain link fences. So, like, I don't know how to integrate it into my steez. Um, uh, He's killing it out there. Paving the way. Nice one, Brad. Paving the way. And there's a lot of people his age snowboarding. No. Yeah, buying stuff. But either way, I don't know. I think some of it, too, is, like, I mean, Chris and I probably are at like a middle middle aged part of snowboard careers, and you look at someone like that, and it's like very, you know, same with Seth. You know, you're like, there's a part of you that is the most attracted to seeing somebody older than you being like, fuck yeah, I get to keep doing this and like keep getting scared and keep pushing myself. Like, damn, that's inspiring, you know? Like earlier when you were talking about King of Brighton, I thought back and I'm like, Ooh, maybe for me, maybe Tonino's like, my king because he's like the silent king you know he's not like coming out of the gates that he's like often. misty yeah he's, he's kind of just like maybe i will make an appearance with the minions like i don't know <laughs> but yeah yeah i just don't i don't think like i mean it, this kind of goes back to that whole sport non-sport thing but it's like just snowboard you know what i mean like uh, sure when you're doing tricks and you're just locked in that progression mode and then there everyone who's been through it knows that day that you're just like, damn, you know what I mean? You see the next kids just rallying yeah. through stuff. And and there's this weird time where you're kind of finding yourself again because you, you're not like, you know, performing, but if you're still stoked on it and you're still out there going, like there's no expiration date to like snowboarding, you know, there shouldn't be ever. You're stoked. Like if you're having fun, you know, and you're you're just psyched to get up there and go ride, whether it's a turn or if it's a double core. You know, it's all the it's all that that same chase. You know, so I don't think there should you know brands like especially that like I think if it's if they if it comes down to like the shallowness of like oh yeah you're done like you're not putting out video parts you're done it's like actually now you have more value. Because the knowledge and the experience that you have and the way that you pull in marketing and can tie this story because you can talk to so many more people and you're you're just like your reach is bigger. You know what I mean? If it Yeah, I don't know. And it's just I'm old, like wicked old. But, uh, you know, it's not, you know, I, I just like to ride. Right. You know, and I like seeing people like seeing Mikey up there first first chair is like he's getting clips it's insane it's so oh, stoked and he's 49 he's so he turns 50 this year in uh next month i think march yeah yeah march and and he's 15? like going yeah. out with canon yeah. who's canon's he's out 18 out yeah, yeah. that's beautiful that's exactly beautiful. i the just thing, yeah the thing that's cool too is you think about if you're 
what's your job as a snowboarder? If you really kind of boil down, maybe to inspire. Inspire could be a word, right? Sure. I mean, it's to help sell products for your brands but, if it's your, you, the job part, you know? Yeah. But you do that through inspiration. Mm. And I, I don't know. Maybe that's debatable. But that's there's a, there's also an inspiring point that they're like, this man is 49 years old. He was our hero. He, and he's still our fucking hero. Mm. He took a little break. And he took a little break. And then re hero And he's a fucking... <laughs> and, and, like, Seth's still our hero. Sa- grew up watching him. But then there's it's funny because there's like that twenty year old kid that's like fucking trying, dude. You know, <laughs> he's like, dude, a forty nine year old man is like <laughs> on the team. I just bagged two seventy through the king rail, <laughs> and you don't even want to take a look at me. You don't even want to take a look. Yeah, but it's also fucking amazing. Which dude. goes to show you though, there's more than just doing that trick through the king rail to be that pro, that big dog pro. Yeah. That goes back into what you were talking yeah. about with the art and the sport. You know, yeah, like it doesn't have to be a certain thing for it to be appealing to people. Like yeah, it can be, it can be Michael LeBlanc at forty nine jumping off of Walters and landing flat <laughs> and just like and getting after it and and inspiring people his age or you know like he can he inspires people my age he inspires people Cannon's age you know like he's been my hero like I wa- I grew up watching video parts of Seth and Mikey and. Like all of you guys, basically, but like that's just like that whole art thing. Just, just like it's so sick that it doesn't have an expiration date. Because like if if someone just one or two people finds it appealing, it has value. So it doesn't mean that like this is a great comment. Mark Pemble says ageism. Reed Smith said it all. <laughs> the old guys need to move on and make room. Yeah. Good and luck. In all fairness, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Move on. But don't move out. Move on. Move up the mountain. You know what I mean? Like, the, don't, you know, let bring in more space, you know, for the younger kids that are progressing. And then, you know, in the old guys, when you actually do a front board, you're like, that was so sick. And everybody loves it because, like, you know, you it's did novelty. it again. You know what I yeah. mean? So, yeah, move on. Just don't move out. We're seeing move those up. lift lines. There's got to be uh, product being sold. There's got to be. There's got to be room for all these guys. Yeah. I think the problem is you take those lift lines. You got to take the, a lot of those borders that go a few times a year and, and the they're not bought into the culture. Years. They're not bought into the culture. You got to take them as somebody that snowboards to identifying as I'm a snowboarder. I know about the culture. You need to bridge that gap. And I think that would make the pros have more influence because a lot of those people don't know a single fucking pro. True. Look at Dave Downing. Like, Dave Downing is, like, he snowboarded. He did the video parts. He did tricks. You know, he had style. He had everything, right? And then, you know, for for someone like Dave, like, he he went on within, like, this retail marketing job, and he's taking out retailers, and he's, he's talking about product. He knows what snowboards can do what makes them do what they do and all the boots and the bindings and everything and he's like the perfect person that you want as a brand in a shop saying like no this is this is good and it's like well you know if dave downing if i'm a shop kid dave downing's telling me this is good i'm gonna listen Hmm. right so it's not like it's not like you know, Seth, you're a great example. Move That's out. It. You know, and it's not, you know, if he, if he, if we lost, if snowboarding lost, like Dave Downing or something like that, you know, because he, he wanted to go like pursue something else, it's like, okay, if he want, really wanted to do that, awesome. But it would suck. You know what I mean? Like Dave's the perfect person in there that, you know, knows a lot about snowboarding and keeping him around is valuable for the whole culture. Well said. So. Well, now that snowboarding's grown up, it's awesome to see it taking care of its people, you know? Why can't we be involved with snowboarding our whole lives? Why do we got to move out, you know? Exactly. Just make room for everybody. I think Mikey also does it with a lot of, like, respect. Like, he's appreciative of what the kids are doing right now. He's, like, probably watching it, reading about it, still caring. He, like, wants to go up there and, like, participate with... Like, I think he wrote something about it, which I think you know, maybe touched on ageism, which is like, there's so much beauty, not just in snowboarding culture, but culture in general to like share and experience different age groups at like different 
points of your life. Like obviously your parents are the first people that you interact with that are so much older than you. But then once you get a friend group, if you can keep that friend group pretty open as far as age, you can get so much insight from older people, but then you can also get so much like almost like, you know, energy from the youth, you know? So to surround yourself with people of every age is, is your best bet for living a full life, you know, as far as like, if you want to learn and experience things outside of your own little comfort zone, it's like, that's something we should strive for is like, Oh shit. Like it'd be great to just go have dinner with people who have a different perspective on, you know, their part of life right now. And Mikey, I think is just like the hot point of that in our little Brighton scene currently where you're like, hell yeah. That like this dude who has literally seen every single part of it, the highs, the highest highs of pro snowboarding is still wanting to be here at 9 a.m. putting his board down in the lift line to like go hit a cliff he's hit 50 times, million times. Like that's beautiful, and that should like mean something to Canon or some or the Dustbox kids to be like, fuck yeah, I, I want to like learn how this man sees snowboarding so that I can develop my own kind of perspective with a wider lens. Mm -hmm. Good, stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Dude, there's another another point, too, to be said as well, because I remember if, if I put myself in the shoes of a 21-year-old version of myself when I'm trying to come up, like, get these fucking old guys out of here, man. Like, I'm we're killing it, and we can't get any love. We can't get any shine. And you're just trying to get your foot in the door, and it's frustrating. It's frustrating, you know? And... Uh, but it's, imp it's, like, interesting when you go do signings, like, let's say, for example, or I've been on a 32 trip, and, dude, the line for J.P. <laughs> Walker is, there's, like, everybody's like, just like, can you just get out of the way so I can talk to J.P., please? <laughs> and, Jer and Big Mountain Jeremy Jones. <laughs> yeah, and like, like yeah, and Big Mountain Jeremy Jones, and you're like, dude, nobody gives a shit about the 20-year-old Dan. There's no line, you know? And, and then it, there's also the backdoor kind of things that happen behind closed doors is, like, the reps, right? You go to a sales meeting. And the, a lot of times the reps determine who has products and, and the reps are the ones saying, we want a Jamie Lynn boot or we want a JP Walker. Like, who do you want on the team? We need Jamie Lynn and JP Walker. And they're the ones that sell it to the shops. And so there's like, it's really frustrating when you're a kid trying to get your foot in the door uh, when, when there's, but there's, a, there's also a place for, for the legends mm. of our sport. So yeah. interesting stuff. All right. You mentioned that the youth gives you energy. Uh, like an energy drink? Is that what we're about? Yeah, it's like a kind of like, like an energy natural, drink. Oh, it's natural, it's like good for you. Is energy. it like a NOS energy drink? It's like a NOS Bang Rockstar Monster <laughs> Bowl. You know, we, we wanted to we wanted to advertise all these brands on our <laughs> show, Brian. Where this is free advertising for them. Yeah, we did this for free. We did this for free. <laughs> oh, fuck. Dude, when I, when I bought test. these, the kid was tripping on the original gold Rockstar logo. Like, dude, that's the throwback, man. It's a big deal. But yeah. but how many of those have you have I tried? Have you sampled just Red Bull and just Monster. You want to do a blind taste test? Yes. Chris, you got a blindfold. Oh, see which yeah. one's the best. Yeah. yeah, let's do a Chris uh, Grenier blind. I'll pull my beanie over my eyes. Okay, that, dude, it's pretty, I can't I can't see anything. It's pretty easy. You know, the, well, the, run we gotta, through a wall. Smelling salts, one of them. We right? gotta. Well, I can tell with the can. Hang yeah, on. But can, There's we, only one. Do we can. pour it in oh, his put mouth? It, put it in a. Put it in a. One yeah, of you these pour. Cups. You pour it in my. Pour it in, in the mouth. Here we go. I'll see if I can guess which one's which. All right. Brian, what do you think about all these energy drinks? Torgier, you ride for an energy drink company. I do. Maybe you guys could have a discussion about this while I do this. You want to go first? Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Face off, No, no, no. Put Face it in off. The, oh, my God. <laughs> that's a proper oh, that's sip. good. That was bad. No, that was good. All right. Put that one on the good list. That was good. That was good. Yeah, that's a good I don't know list. what that was. Is that a NOS or a bang? Oh, shit. That was straight NOS. That was, that was NOS. NOS. All right, yeah. one for one. Wow. One for one. <laughs> Keep them coming. All right, what Keep do you think this one is? I this love is, this energy is a, drinks. This is actually a bird bath from Brian, Frank April as well. Okay, right, I up. love energy drinks. Here we go. Bird bath. Right from Frank April. Bird bath. Oh, that was fruity. It was fruity. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a Red Bull. That was maybe a rock star? That's a no-go. Uh, Bang? That Just, was yep, a bang. That's a bang. That's a bang. Okay, that's a bang. Keep them coming. I'll get rock. Keep them coming. I bet I'll get a bull. <laughs> this guy with his, he's like the. Or he rode for, uh, he rode for an energy drink for some time, huh? He was a teammate of yours, huh? Yeah. That was a Red Bull. Need more? 
That was a Red Bull. Red this Bull. this, this will Keep similarly take years off his life as you working in that uh, toxic waste plant, <laughs> Seth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be up all night. Here we go. It's just sips, dude. It's not going to be that bad. That was water. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying One to... of these has to be a smelling salt. <laughs> so I can tell the difference. You can't drink a smelling salt. Uh, oh, man. Um, I'm kind of getting it all over here. Sorry to the viewers. They're basically doing this was just a, to like... A rock rock star, and for the, for the listeners, I guess you got the idea. Yeah, that's a rock star. Oh, this dude, is a, a, uh, you do this one? a blind... This is a blind energy. taste test. test. He's basically yeah. just confirming... Mm. That they all will as a monster quickly Dude, kill this you. This guy's that was pretty, good. pretty good. That was man. really good. Yeah. yeah, I mean that was like a ninety percentile, pretty yeah. much. I mean, you know, monster, you know, Red Bull. They're pretty distinct. The, it was the ones I I didn't know. <laughs> I've never up. I've never tried Bang. I'm Me gonna neither. try it. That's we'll give crazy. it a try. So, how much money would it take you to ride for one of these companies, Brian? Dude, let me try. You got a number? <laughs> 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 was that good or bad? Bad, yeah. It's tasty. That's crazy. How, what is my number to write? For which one? Like, bang. Does it have I've creatine? never tried a NOS either. This is a Star Blast. Does it say that it has creatine in it? Potent. Oh, there's creatine. I might start drinking fuel. these. Yeah, there is creatine. Um, wow. I'm hitting zero. it with a no cost. This is like a fat free or calorie free, yeah. no sugar one. I'm Dude, going no amount of money, Chris. Creatine in there. No huh? amount of money? Yeah. Wow. NOS ain't that bad. You're saying, like, all right, here's, I got $1 billion. This one's a sugar free All you got to do is put a rock star NOS? sticker on your hat, Brian. One billion dollars. Try this one. I, that's the nice thing about hypotheticals. Is like, of course I'm gonna say no. There's no. Yeah, like, but let's be real. One billion dollars. But real is like, Rockstar's not hitting me up for a billion dollars. Yeah, but Nor... you're gonna say for real for a million dollars in one year, one calendar year. Uh, actually, yeah, I could confidently say for a million dollars, I would say no. What about a billion? Billion is so far out that I know it would never happen. Oh, so you gotta say yes or no. That's also a no, dude. What are you bullshit. gonna? What am I, I am gonna not do then? Believing that what a do you, billion what do you dollars do with the rest of your life, like I, just for for me personally, like I don't. You got a billion dollars. Then what, buds? What would you do? I'd have good. I'd still do what I'm doing now. You I'd have straight I'd, guilt. Everything that was bought with the billion dollars, you'd come over and be like, "Great house, Brian. Like, what do you do for work?" And I'd be like. Oh, I completely got rid of my morals so that I could have this house you like. Like, how do I even I'll tell you, celebrate you anything? You can do great so many things, things with it. You do great. You know what I do? I'd buy like fifty gigantic TVs, <laughs> and I'd have them all on a, like a roller system, and you could just and so basically like I could watch like football, and you know if like. Are you talking about loading tabs? If basically? like Brady throws an interception, I could just smash my TV with a baseball bat and then roll <laughs> the another one, one in. Yeah. Boom. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the billion dollars. Think about that. That's think great. about that. You could think about this. If, you don't I would, even need a billion dollars do. to do that. This, TVs are cheap now. That's true. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. We could make this dream happen for you. You could actually probably buy all those TVs from your monster money. Yeah, so. that's true. You're right. I could maybe even make this dream happen. Yeah. The other thing I do is I buy like a front end loader. And then, like, I would just, like, destroy my friend's cars, like, in their driveway <laughs> and, like, run them over. And then I'd just go, like, buy him a new car. Yeah. Be like, ha-ha, here's a new one. <laughs> that would actually be a perfect example of somebody taking money from one of those brands, what they would do with it. That's a perfect <laughs> use of the money. Torgy, you want to weigh in on this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd go on a more serious note probably, though, but it's not like you're drinking 10 of these a day, you know? Like, I drink one of these when I'm out filming and I need an, I need an energy boost. And it, I'm doing fine. You yeah. Know? And, uh, and Kids also... Kids fit as a fiddle over there. Like, what do you mean very, you're doing fine? Very it goes, handsome. It yeah. goes... I was doing my laundry last week off of that kid's abs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, but it goes, like, so much further than the, uh, the actual product, too, I think. They do so much for, like... For snowboarders in the industry, they make so many video projects happen. They they put on <laughs> X Games. They make they don't make any of them. They don't put on the X Games. They're paying for X Games. They're the main sponsor for X Games. But they don't do any of it. They don't do any they of it. They just give you money. No, they don't just give you money. But they're not. They're not putting it together. Your, your sponsors just give you money. Seth, well, who made who made Credocosm? Vulcan did, and, and you, 
Yeah, but we and the kids in it. You were in a video funded by Monster. Did they make it? No. They funded it. No, they didn't. Meyer made the movie. Oh, they, dude, they gave Meyer boatloads of money to make the movie. That's not a fucking argument. Dude. Yeah. Everybody pays people to do yeah. things. And when you take money from Nitro, yeah, that money is cycled into snowboarding with for me personally no guilt attached to it that the argument is only from the money. They're also making the boards. They're also supporting people who come from this industry that want to see it succeed and be a viable business, not just selling trash to people at 7-Eleven. No, but okay, let, <laughs> let's okay look at it this way. How much money is in the snowboarding industry if you take all of those companies who do make, in your words, shitty products out of the industry? <sighs> What, how many people would have know. a job? I mean, how many people would be professional snowboarders, you think? All of them? No. All the same ones? No. Who's get, Okay, Fuck who's me. on Monster who goes away as a pro? A lot of who? them. Who? Who's on Monster? Right now, you, you Judd, lose... Judd, like, his main sponsor is Monster, right? He doesn't have to. Judd, be. Dusty, Kokomo, Tess Cody. When he goes me. through the years, it probably stacks up, you know? You lose Monster to Mar. No, you lost. You lost your energy sponsor. Yeah, and you remained a dominant pro, enough so that you got a new energy sponsor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but but, dude, I don't. I look, would never. It's hard be, because I, never, I love you. I would never I be able you, to so. do the things that I do if it wasn't for the support of Monster. That hurts my feelings. I think maybe Seth, you should pay works. Torger more so he doesn't have to write for Monster. <laughs> All right, I'm going to fucking stir the pot here. <laughs> stir I'm going to stir this thing up. Jambalaya. I'm gonna, let's just get some jambalaya going. Yeah. Because there's an argument, right? You, you're so morally tied to the fact that energy drinks are bad for snowboarding. But hold yet, on, hold on. Morally, f no. I'm morally tied to that they're bad for people. Okay. All right, they so, are so, unhealthy so, for so, people but, to drink. Okay. That's that's the that's Okay, your, let me let me battle. Okay, that's your bad. That's yeah, your point, yeah, right? You're, they're yeah, unhealthy for yeah, people. Yeah. Okay. Let's just take snowboarding. There there is like the factory that makes a lot of snowboards and things like that is funded by like fucking child it's like fucked up China factories where they're making like 10 cents a day and it's like there's a, like there's like a lot of underlying fucked up issues in snowboarding coming from the the factories of the products that get made, and and like why plant your flag in? I'm I'm just stirring the pot, but you're planting your flag in this one. But th there there's a lot of other flags that that are kind of contradictory to that too, in some senses. As in, you think that because there's there's poor human treatment in making the products that we use. You think that is the same as making a product that is terrible for people? No, but they're both moral conflicts in a sense. They're both not mer mer morally pure. As far as I know, of what I know of the brands that I ride for of products being made, there is not clear data, as clear as there is with Monster, or whatever the seven are here, that it is like... Like, I could be pointed at, like, hey, man, like, nitro boards kill X amount of people a year. You shouldn't wear a sweatshirt with their name on it. That is different than the, like, multitudes of reports being, like, this is extremely harmful to a shitload of people drinking this and that it's not regulated, sold everywhere on Earth, basically, and promoted everywhere with endless budgets without really informing the consumer how bad it is for you, for me, those are two different things. I have not been to the uh, Autumn Headwear or Giro factory and looked around and been like, what is, what is the, like, um, yeah, human care of these people? But that is very different than clear data saying, like, this shit is terrible for people. We all know it. We all know it. There's no data that's like, Energy drinks are great. People should drink more of them. 
I just had about six brands. I'm feeling fucking <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> I feel like I might. I need, I, I want to put some more down. Yeah, this one's but you're, got, li- you're this lying. One's you're got, just uh, trying to be funny. This one's when... got ultra CoQ10 in it and EAA aminos and super creatine. Here's Zero here's calories. here's what I think. Here's here's what I think. You know, you have you have some good points. You have some good points. Do you think they're good for people? You think, have a I kid. You pe- have a kid make, tomorrow. People make their own decisions. You have a kid tomorrow, tomorrow, or Seth has a kid right now. You feed said kid an energy drink every day. Funnel it right into their mouth. Every right day. The <laughs> Would I feed them uh, energy drinks? I don't know. I don't know. But but I also like. Would you even allow them to drink them? Look at this. That's you're a not good even question. supposed to drink it unless you're uh, 18 and older. <laughs> I think I right think Mac Dog said it best. It's got an nobody's age, out it's there. Got an look, age nobody's label. looking out for you out there. You know what I mean? It's yeah, tough. and I guess I'm just like yeah, all all good. Like again, this is what I said on the bomb hole, which is like this is my own personal opinion. I I, I just think I it's do, interesting to like promote a- something that's known to be bad for you to kids. I do like how you squirmed your way out of the fact that you're in a movie that had a giant monster logo at the beginning of it. I mean, slash you, Travis's contest that is Travis's like Red contest. Bull Ultra Natural. <laughs> like, I'm not squirming my way out of it. I'm just saying, like, that's also why I started producing my own shit. Is like, I didn't want to have that as the excuse of the only way to contribute art to this community is by taking drug money. Drug money? Is that what you... I mean, it's... It is it is the current drug money. All right, I'll tell you, if it's if it's <laughs> put, having a put monster a, is a, equivalent to taking drug money, dude. I'll say this: when I were, when I was doing mud dogs, we were doing construction. I'd be like coming around fucking three o'clock, running out of steam. Boom, slam a Red Bull. <laughs> fucking get through the rest of the day. I'm feeling great. You know what I'm saying? I don't see I don't see that as being like devastating to our culture. Should you drink five of them a day? No. no, and are there are there like is there diabetes that's rampant and is it is it great for you? No, but like people make their own decisions. People drink beers. You can also drink eighteen beers and drive into a fucking tree. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, it's 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 people make their own decisions. And if, for me, what it came down to is like, all right, I can put this sticker on my fucking hat, and I can like get paid where I don't have to work, or I can fucking work a shitty job and not make nearly as much money. And they they supported me, so I'm thankful for the support. And and uh, and I don't have as much of a moral. I I love just battling it out with you because it's fun. <laughs> but I, I didn't have like I don't have like like energy drinks don't equal like mass genocide to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I, I value I respect your opinion because I don't think they're great, but they're yeah. supporting people, and it's it's fun to go back and forth on this. I like that he's passionate about a cause. Yeah, no, I 100 yeah. percent agree with that too, and I respect you, Brian, for for your. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's a standpoint. And it's again, good. And you're yeah. not deviating from your thing. Most people like yeah, oh yeah. Don't have that straight line that He's you thought have. it and out too, good. you know. I just I'm not on the same page, which is, yeah, which is fine. Which I I'm totally fine with and like yeah. I said, like I love you, you so much. I love and you too. I also a lot of love, love, a lot of love watching you snowboard. So if for you you're saying the only way to do it is to ride for monster. I'm not saying it's I the only way. I got to see do that it, switch back five methods. Oh, so it's like, I like you know, this. He's coming some, around. Uh, He's coming around. <laughs> there's some point that I got to like uh bow down, but I think end of the day like they're they're uh it is weird for all of us to tie our likeness to brands. And like you say, it's a good question. Like, I think that a lot just about our job, which is like, we are promoting consumerism. You know, there's a there's a bit, my biggest frailty in my job when I look at it is that I don't want to convince people to buy stuff they don't need. I don't want to incur a shitload of global production, shipping, mishap, ship back, this thing, that thing, like how much human energy is wasted on stuff people don't need. But I do support the brands that I ride for are making products that allow us to do this activity that, like, personally at least grants me so much joy and, like, fulfilled days where I actually feel whole as a human being in nature that I'm, like, I can come to terms with the fact that that's my job is is to sell products to people. But I try my hardest to say, like, if you don't need it, if you can fix your product – fix it and use it another year like if you can buy an old freaking board on ebay from 2005 it's probably amazing like 
you don't need to be consumed by new products because yeah, like that's my guilt, which is like just consumerism guilt, which is like, damn, I'm the face for these brands to just sell more and more stuff, more, get more, get this color, get this thing, get this thing. And it's just weird when you're at the forefront of it and your face is plastered next to it. So at some point, yeah, I do draw the line where I'm like, I'll plaster my face next to like a waterproof jacket, but not a drink that's harmful to children. What about an, uh, smelling salt? <laughs> 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 I actually feel, they land? dude. When they I watch that video, like that's actually what I do need, and maybe this is my downfall: is that I should have been riding for Red Bull the whole time. Because when I go out with Austin Sweeten, the like clear levels of energy that are different between him and I, I'm like, I struggle to keep up with him. So maybe I should have a Red Bull and a smelling salt. And when he wants to like keep hiking a jump or something, I have a little backup, you know. Well, question: Would you ride for run through while smelling salts? Because we're thinking about putting together a team. We want to get you the full helmet wrap, kind of like similar to like a like a Red Bull helmet. Absolutely, we should talk about it um, to see if is it similar to that that billion dollar offer from. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's pull up that hockey clip again. <laughs> Should we, should we smack another sniffer to get Dude, out of Honestly, side. like, smack. Seth is, yeah. Seth has the sniff. Like, the you guys sniff. should put him on first. He oh, the has Seth the, sniff from Good Sport. He has the iconic sniff. Or what's, the, what's the video? Uh, uh, cheers? Nice try. Nice try, yeah. yeah. Nice try. Oh, he's got the sniff oh, clip. Got got yeah, let's hit one. Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's a good batch. It's a good batch. <laughs> ah. It's a good batch. Really good batch. Oh, batch sixty nine. Oh, oh my god! You know? uh, I love it when it just you feel it in the back of your eyeball. Oh, that's when you hit it real good. Yeah, the back of your head when you, you hit it. When it's behind your eyeball. It's nice. Look at it's that. Nice. Hey, look at that. All hard. this talk about consumerism. I love that number sixteen. He's just taking it. Yeah, yeah, three, yeah. Four. Just, he's got his like, jaw swing, yeah. swinging around too. Oh, that guy took a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he does it twice. Exact, yeah. exact he's same. Exact same. Woo! He's a fan of the show. Oh, that's good. Woo! Ooh, love oh it. my god! You should right. try and get him on the team. Maybe. Yeah, we'll see if they want to ride for uh, <laughs> run through a wall. All right, uh, good stuff. That was a great debate, Brian. Yeah, that was good. That, that's fun. I Master love it. Master debating. It's just fun. I think it's Brian. something that we can keep going for a long time. You know, <laughs> just keep that debate going. Are any right. um are any dust boxers energied? Uh, uh, Monster sponsors their project. But uh, not Benny, as a crew, Benny, but Benny not, Milam, not, uh, Red Bull. Yeah, Benny's oh, on Red, Red Bull. Bull. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well. Okay. All right. We got a couple more things. We're going to wrap it up here. We got a little bit more left here. Uh, we're going to talk about Creedal Cosm. I believe it's Chasm or Cosm. Chasm. The Creedal Cosm. Creedal Cosm. Yeah. Uh, we got the teaser here. Why don't you talk us through what? What the? Why did you come up? It's with a that real name? word, right? Is that a real word? Creedal well, Chronicles, uh, baby. Yeah. So. Within kind of like the Volcom lore, you know, I've been with Volcom since 2001. And there's always been like this, you know, this mystical vibe of like Volcom trips and like all the different stories. Like whenever you're hanging out with like Wooly and Imigart and Remy and, you know, just everyone and Jamie and Gooch for sure. And it's like there's always this 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 talk and this this lore that kind of surrounds the brand and and um and then, you know, it kind of, you know, they always had tossed around the word creedal, you know, kind of like, and I always kind of took it as like creedal is like the crew, you know what I mean? It's like you're in the creedal or, you know, the creedlers are the people. And and then, um, you know, and obviously there was the, the Creedal Chronicles, which was made by Chris Brunkhart. And it was a book. And it was about this cabin that was actually up in, I think it's up in Garzman's Pass. They called it Kenny's Cabin. Somebody... I don't even I don't know really know the story behind it, but the team went there once and part of that section of that book they had kind of filmed there and we did the uh you know Mountain Time and New Belgium helped uh get us this rent us this house for a month, two months for the first year, or one month for the first year, then two months for last year. And it was kind of that similar vibe, and it was just a place that everyone kind of came together and you know, we did some trips, you know, just throughout the year. And it was kind of like Rav was in there, and he Rav is just like always just going crazy. He loved the house. He was always creating art, and we were bringing up drum sets and music and playing on the deck. And it was just it's just something that Cue just kind of came clip. together. Sorry, keep going. I bet you wish you had that so house anyways, this year. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so it kind of formed this like 
this like universe or this world, and I kind of like balled up all this like lore of Volcom and everything into this like basically Jeez. its own like cosm, you know, because like a microcosm is like this small little thing. And then working with uh, Skylar Brent, you know, filming a lot of the video and also coming up with all of the visuals and all of the graphics, just really bringing the vision to like life. It's like literally it was just like, oh, we have this idea, and it was just like, boom, he did it, and it was just amazing. And yeah, the video just came together, just to kind of like spontaneously wasn't really like planned into it was just like we had the footage and it was just like let's make something let's do it and there it is and it was all about like tying in kind of the vibe of like old Volcom with all the new generations and going forward and everything so it was just like a just a creation that happened kids are loving the vibe stoked Love to hear so that. So I've heard anyways from it's kids. Awesome. Yeah. We, yeah. Video turned out great. We have a couple other clips. We got a bang. Oh, we got Tor Gear here. Tor Gear. Back oh, Rodeo shit. 7 Stalefish. Great grab choice. The old MFM jump. Oh, and yeah. Shakira. Chicane. Talk us through what's going on with these, Tor Gear. Where are we, what's happening here? How would someone like me do something like this? Back <laughs> Rodeo young kid. style? Just go off the lip and... Uh, Look to your left. That's it. Yeah. It's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, Coach Torger. With all this powder, I guess kids could actually just go do that. Huh? Go off, yeah, go off no. the lift. And uh, look to the left. Yeah. We, just yeah. go fast, I was pop, look to the left. Two days last year at Brighton. This is at Brighton. I think that was one and a half days. You came one, out this yeah. one day, and then you met us out there one, the other day, yeah. that day. Yeah. When you did the chicane off sunshine step down. Yeah. It's like he's just why'd diving you, in. Why did you choose to go stale, stale fish on the B Road 7? Uh, kind of just... Um, like doing stale fish grabs. I, f- I feel like uh, the go-to grab on a back rodeo for a lot of people is an indie grab. I on feel like seven, yeah, or and mellow, uh, or melon, or a melon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, or nose. Yeah, there's a lot of grabs, I guess. But no, but that stale, seems like see, a hard but, um, one. Yeah, no, stale. F- it kind of came naturally too, because you're kind of like you, you, like your body positioning is that way. So if you just put your hand down, that's the, that's it, where your hand will end up. The scariest thing is you lose it. Like, it's one of the tricks that you lose before you put it into the landing. Yeah. Because you have that blind, like, right there, yeah, like, yeah, where yeah, you yeah, normally, yeah. Uh, you'd be able to see it. You're, it's, like, the scariest one to commit to on the 7 because you can't spot it in the spot where yeah. you want to be able to see it. So you see where I let go of the grab <laughs> right there. <laughs> you really look like you're regular footed in that clip. You, what, are you saying like it's switch? Do you think it looks like... Is I'm saying switch? it looks like it's switch. Did you I mirror the clip on accident? Just kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> no, he's saying it, it looks it's, bad. No, it's got yeah, great. Exactly. It's, it's, it's perfect. perfect. You're like, saying it's perfect. that it would uh, do it a lot better if it was regular? That's no, always good when somebody asks you a question. You're like, damn, was that switch? <laughs> <You're> like, no, <laughs> I just did it really bad. I just did it really bad. <laughs> No, uh, but when you like just the way the grab, you're, way you're you grabbing can... that stale, it looks like someone grabs a melon. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? You just got max like body and board control. We got to queue up. Uh, we got Betty Milam switch boardy too. This is a heavy yeah. one. Jay yeah. Jones uh, started <laughs> this spot off with a fifty like a ten years ago, probably. At least. Where is this? Minnesota. U of M in Minnesota. That massive kink. Jeremy had the <laughs> Chalk Smack uh, box cover or poster, mm-hmm. and then um, yeah, this clip came through from. Uh, Benny's filmer Dan, and um, I was like, "Yeah, that's that's going in for sure. <laughs> it's got to go in." <laughs> Switchboardy. I guess Hammer. it was like f- second, third try, maybe first try. I don't know. You edit the video? Yes. Damn. Nice work, dude. Yes. How'd you learn Lars, how to edit? Lars filmed it. You edit it? Uh, yeah. I mean, we all kind of me, you Lars, it too. and um, Ollie filmed the video. Lars probably had the most clips. I mean, mm-hmm. we had a lot of doubled up angles and obviously didn't I'm, have always, any... I'm always choosing his clips. <laughs> didn't have and any issues. Ollie re- had amazing re- 16. Oops. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you didn't have any issues reusing songs. I don't think we reused any songs. Like, not that I know. They seem like Volcom originals. The, the, uh, just trying to pull from different wells, you know? Like, Long history do. of video making at that company. Yeah. Our music supervisor, Kurt Mindis, is amazing at like, just I'm just like yeah I'm kind of feeling this vibe boom Bam. and it's boom you know working with someone that actually you know can feed you the music so I love digging music especially for like videos and video parts I'm not I'm not the type of person that has like a bank set up like this has got to be a part like Justin Meyer has probably like x amount of vaults you know that he's pulling from I'm more so just like okay here's what I can use 
go find it. And I love digging in there and like trying to find little misty things. And Rav, Rav and Harry and Brandon Cocard made a ton That's, of sounds and musics yeah. and interstitials. So kind of leaning on, yeah. Yeah, we were working on that in the summer. Watching those guys' dynamic is insane. Like th- those, like Harry's process of just like recording and sickest drummer of all time. So it was Love great. Love the blend of music. Art and snowboarding in Volcom. Yeah. It's yeah. really cool. Really trying to, like, really, like, really working on, like, creating an arc as far as, like, this emotional arc of going, like, you know, bringing the emotions up and bringing it down. And, like, I heard this piano track and I was like, Egan, you know what I mean? Just like this brand new rider exploding on the scene. And there was just this, like, beautiful p- piano track. And Rav actually laid down another piano track because you know, different rights and whatnot that we couldn't get. So Rav just, Rav and Harry recorded Rav playing the music and it was amazing. And then um, the sickest thing was uh, the Grey Goo. It's this band from White Sh- Whitefish, Montana. And Blum goes up like mid, mid igloo, like the igloo is what we called the house at Brighton. And mid igloo, like Blum leaves for like a weekend. He had to go up to go to a bank slalom. And he goes up there and he hears this band and at, at the after party or whatever and gets a CD and it's a demo, brings it back. Rav can't stop listening to it. Everyone can't stop listening to it. And it's just like this psychedelic, like crazy, awesome, like, you know, stoner rock music. And um, ended up using three tracks in the in the movie from that band. Just yeah. And that's what's kind of cool, you know, because like trying to like tap in and these these dudes are snowboarders. They are so fired up too on Volcom and the fact that we use their music. And I, I'm like, you know, following them all on Instagram. They're out there splitboarding, like, all, you know, all season long, like now, you know, and they're just juice. So, big shout to the Grey Goo for the for the music vibes, and it was it fits so perfect. So, yeah, That's amazing, pretty cool, good shit. All right, we're two hours in. I'm gonna start kind of. Uh, we're gonna cover some news real quick. Uh, we talked about it earlier. Uh, Mike Liddell turned pro. Fucking awesome. Uh, also, Egan got announced on the team with Credo Cosm, which is she's been ripping. Uh, J-Mo is on Nitro. Haley Lakeland's on Nitro. Ride dropped their 30-year documentary. Uh, Max Warbington just dropped a new iPhone part. Solomon dropped their Hillside Project edit. There's a new Freddie Perry edit out called Eclipse. There's only five clips in it, but it's they're all amazing. New Impalers video dropped, and the Fava Brothers dropped their new movie. Uh, as far as our dive into being news people, uh, do a podcast that's uh, that's our news. I'm sure we're missing a bunch of stuff. And then we want to announce Bombhole Cup is April 1st and 2nd at Brighton. So, uh, you know, save the dates. Day one's a bank slalom. We're going to do all kinds of fun classes, like vet classes for the old guys, Grom classes, men's, women's, industry, skiers on boards. If you're a skier, you want to try snowboarding? We do vintage boards, boards over 30 years old. So Is it 30? Sh- I don't, no, no, no. Yeah, no, no. I think we did 20 years did old. 20? 20. Are you Th- sure? Well, I mean, we can, 20 is just like... Yeah, that's where you did 30. You can rock a Burton custom. like. <laughs> but still, though, nostalgia. Well, I, swear, like, I think you did 30. Wait, so let's, do, let's think about... Tw- we can decide right now. But... I think about like 2005, probably, you know, JP was riding that like orange and yellow forum. To me, that thing's like nostalgic at this point. I swear that it was 30 at the thing. Should we, should we just call it 25? Uh, what's pre, it? Pre 20th, 20th century? 20th century and, and early. Is that before like 20th that. century? Everything. Before like year 2000? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay, before year 2000. Call it Prince. What do you think? Like it's 1999. I think <laughs> Prince class. Prince Good. class. I like that. Okay. Well, uh, I think we pretty much did it, guys. Um, yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. Yep. Um, you guys rule. Thank you for the Creedle Cosm plugs. Yeah, it's awesome. We'll invoice you guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do. You can do that. I mean, you, just, you know, I'm good for it. Let me make sure there's Kids no good. other questions that are looking good. Brian, on keep that debate going. Oh, we got a. Love this is it. a good question. Here we go. Hello. This is uh, Olivia from Paris. Uh, I have a question for Torgia. Um How does he deal with um, with the cramps? And how many bananas you eat <laughs> per day? Bisous. Oh shit! How do you deal with the cramps? And how many bananas do you eat a day, Torgia? Actually, I eat about three bananas. 
<laughs> What's that? Who, uh, we, we had a bit of a cramping issue. Okay. Um, bananas? Uh, monkeys always eat bananas every day. Two. Every day. How many did you eat today? Three. Damn. So, that's how I keep my leg cramps mm-hmm. from not reoccurring. I mean, you have to have some level of. Like, you got to fight the levels of whatever shit the monster's doing to your levels. You got to bring it down with something natural, you know? All right, we got another old, another old head question. Sorry, I forgot we had some guest questions. Rapid fire. We're going to rip through these. Hey, guys. It's uh, Eric Anderson from beautiful British Columbia calling. First time, long time, huge fan of the show. Keep it up. Just wondering if any of you guys ever had to pass a test to be able to snowboard to get on a hill. For us old guys from the 80s, I'm talking 85 to 88, I can tell you guys that uh, getting that card was just as important as getting your driver's license, and the stoke levels were off the charts, even though your feet hurt like shit at the end of every day. Keep it up, boys. Late. I certainly did, boys. Really? What, wait, what is it? Dude, you went, did you they wouldn't let you on to... a ski resort. Oh. Take a test uh, unless, yeah, first, And you had to pay for that, too. It was like 20 bucks extra. And you had to go up with some dude who could hardly snowboard and prove that you knew how to ride and you were safe. Getting that out of your frame. Really? Yeah, and you had to do it at – it wasn't just like, okay, I got my card in Vermont. You had to do it at every resort. <laughs> no. Wow. Awesome. And I don't know if it was a money grab or is it, was it really a safety thing. I don't know, but – The snowboards are just like a missile. <laughs> it's yeah. like a missile. It I remember was, it was wild. Every year at Brighton – there was like this leash. Oh, the leash. Oh, the leash thing. thing. Oh, yeah, and it yeah, was yeah. always yeah. like the first weekend. It was just like go get a leash. And everyone's like tying their boots, and <laughs> going back to yeah. the car. I was it was in, just yeah. this issue. And then like by day five, nobody talked about a leash for the rest of the year. But uh, every every opening day was it was the a same thing. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last I think it was Farmer Dave. Farmer Dave was definitely like yeah. the leash guy. Okay. Leashes. Last question. Here we go. Hello, this is uh, Bjorn from uh, Oslo. <laughs> I had a question for uh, Seth uh, Hewitt. Uh, um, what is your favorite Wu Tang Clan member and uh, why? <laughs> wow, <laughs> favorite Wu Tang Clan member. Um, what's that, you, Torger? <laughs> no, that was uh, all he had. That was Bjorn uh, from Oslo. Uh, Bjorn from Oslo. I think Oslo said. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go Actually, Shaw, <laughs> Raekwon, Raekwon. Yeah, purple tape. Yeah, Shaw, Shaw. Nice. We're watching the the the, 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 the documentary. U, yeah, Wu Tang. No, no the acting one. Uh, the show. Yeah, that's yeah. just good. Huh? Yeah. Method Man's Wu Tang, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, how far are you on that show? I think we're season. Well, Mason is watching, oh, okay. and he's like jumping ahead. I'm like on uh, like episode whatever five, but we're now now we're all of a sudden we're deep into season two. Oh, geez, so I'm just holding on. Dude, the last life. episode of season one is amazing. Yeah, yeah. When they all spit together for the first time. Yeah. Shh, talk about running through a wall, smelling salts. It's one of those moments. Wow. I literally ran through a wall. Mm. <laughs> you would if you watch it. It's mm. dope. Put it on. Mm. Are you guys changing the name of this? Yeah, we're going to call it Bomb Hole Live. That's a good debate. So we, we've been debate. calling this All Banged Up. We're going to change the name of the show to Bomb Hole Live. Color scheme, too. Because uh, a lot of people don't know what the hell All Banged Up was. We thought it was a good name. I know you're currently All Banged Up. You're, yeah, I like it. You're a herniated disc or something going on. Uh, I was kidding. I'm fine. He's good. <laughs> yeah. Can we can we keep the intro, though? We're, we're going to keep the intro, yeah. yeah that's yeah. a great one. Did you make that or my... Uh, our Drake, oh, our, our uh, graphic designer, give him an air horn. And we don't have an air horn. That's a guest question, so we're not going to do that. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Boop, whoop. We appreciate you guys listening. Uh, it's been a fun show. Yes, it has. And uh, with that being said, we're going to we're gonna freaking throw a bow on this thing. Thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, guys. Thank you. All right. So thanks, Seth. Shout out, hey, French Embassy. Yes, yeah, Seth, the producer. Yeah. All right, let's wrap this thing up. You are listening to All Bang Up. Who that?